take over right now and treat it just as if it was a normal training center. I'm gonna say it, he'll say it again. Uh, we're not doing the whole look back thing again because of course we're not doing that, so he'll remind you in a minute, but we're actually gonna go into material. He's gonna lead it just like you would a class. So he's gonna actually, and I, and I hope you're paying attention, he'll be teaching content, he's gonna show you the skill and uh, you're gonna put it into practice by the time it's all done, begin doing stuff. So, any questions before we, we begin? So I'm just gonna back up. I'm evaluating Randy while he's doing this too. <laughs> Actually, he's done it for groups of pastors and leaders. He's more, he's more than competent than anybody. So thank you, brother, uh, for doing it. Let me get my notes. And uh, Randy, it's all yours, bro. Okay. Well, just, I'll, once again, I wanna, I wanna thank Kevin, uh, Casey, I always forget my man's name right here. Matt. Man. He only pops in. Matt's not always in his group. Right, that's man. why. That's a, uh, <laughs> uh, thank, thank them for the, for the invitation. Uh, and even more so, uh, thank them for TTI and, uh, and what it's done for us. So, But I, I'll share my testimony and all that stuff after this. Uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. We're going to get right into it. Man. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for another day of life, health, and strength. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to be able to come together uh, as your called out ones to, to go forth and to make disciples that make disciples. We pray now, sweet Holy Spirit, that you will come be the teacher that you are. Renew us, refresh us, and empower us. And we thank you in advance for what you're about to, what you're about to do in and through us. Give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, all God's men say, Amen. 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 So we're going we're gonna to start it. Uh, page 115 in your um, blue book and I was, I was telling Kevin uh, when he was sharing with me I, I had to remember uh, I've already taught this this class you know, <laughs> you know the butterflies hit me and oh man you want me yeah but I've already done this so I'm good <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so basically um, chapter 8 is uh, we're learning how to do discovery Bible studies okay so the expected outcome is every disciple maker will gather a group of new believers or pre-Christians to lead them through a discovery Bible study so that they can begin to read God's word, hear his voice, and respond in obedience. And that's the, that's the whole purpose of this is that when you are doing discover, discovery Bible studies, is this is what you're expecting to happen in your Timothys and in the one that, you, that you're doing it with, uh, that they're able to... Uh, read God's word, hear his voice, and respond in obedience. So what we're going to do now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, um, I'm just going to like give you guys different parts to read. So I just start right to my right. You can do the first um, paragraph. Sir, you can do the second paragraph. Uh, sir, you can do the, the third one. And then we'll finish with him doing that. Okay. Learning how to discover the Bible as a group is a critical part of a long-term plan for multiplying disciples and churches. In chapter 6, we introduce SOAPs as a way to do personal Bible study. This chapter introduces a practical Bible study method that builds on what you learned from SOAPs and applies it to groups studying scripture together. This method has been used in countries all over the world in a variety of cultures and contexts. It is highly effective and easy for anyone to do. One of the benefits of this method of study is that it can be done with people who may not have a relationship with Jesus or any prior biblical knowledge or background. It can also be practiced by fully devoted, mature believers. The power comes from reading scripture in community, asking good questions, and allowing the best teacher, the Holy Spirit, to challenge and encourage us. Remember, the word of God is living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is the discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. And so uh, just before we go forward, I just want to encourage you that when you are teaching this, you know, especially in your, in your, in your, in your DMD, um, stick to and stick to what's on the pages and keep it simple because you're going to find out it is actually that simple. In, in uh, how to do group discovery Bible study as you meet with a group of those you are discipling or who have some spiritual interest it's good to follow the normal 
practice we have been using of looking back, looking up, and looking forward. As you begin by looking back, have everyone share one thing they are thankful for and one thing that is causing anxiety or fear in their life. Point out to the group that one aspect of prayer is telling God the things we are thankful for and talking with him about what worries or stresses us out. As everyone shares, pray for one another. And this, this is a big part. To, uh, the look back is very, very important. And uh, this is where you really want to encourage them, hey, just share one thing. Now, you might have some, I don't have anything. So that's fine. But you really want to, uh, the thing I found here in the look back up, especially when it talks about the fear and anxiety, uh, you can see lights come on inside the people as you're doing it. So, uh, you know, once again, you really want to, uh, it's, it's, it's about, it's about uh, this is what I learned, it's about, uh, them getting the content instead of just going through the content. And that's that's what's really important. So sir, if I can get you to go with the, Holy, the first chapter of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Right after you pray, ask the group to share what God said to them in their personal time devotions with him since your last meeting. Asking this question at the beginning of every meeting encourages group members to have a personal time with God. Giving them an opportunity to share allows room for the Holy Spirit to take the group study in a completely different direction than you want. Be sensitive to the group and make sure everyone has time to share what God has shown. After this time, ask the group to share how they have done on their I will statements since their last gathering. This will encourage and hold each other accountable to ensure we are being obedient to what we are learning and hearing from God. Okay, and uh, a big part here about the look back is uh, you can't be afraid to hold them accountable. Right. Okay. Our nature, our 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 normal nature, we don't want to be challenged. We don't want our culture. Okay. Right. But uh, when you establish that in the very beginning with them, that hey, this is part of it, then uh, they the accountability in which I, I'm, I'm uh, not only do I do do a, a DBS. I'm also in a DBS for my own personal growth. So that accountability of knowing that I'm going to have to come and I'm going to have to, you know, share either I did or I didn't do it mm -hmm. uh, is what makes me do it. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's what makes me do it. So, uh, but you cannot be scared to hold them accountable because if you don't hold them accountable, they will not hold themselves accountable. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. So, you, so, you know, but if you put that challenge to them before, and, and, and as I said, the Holy Spirit will lead you on how to do that with that different personality and stuff like that. Uh, that's what That will be their expectation, and that's, that's, that's how they're going to grow. Yes, sir. After everyone has a chance to share, choose a passage of Scripture and have someone read it aloud while everyone follows along in their Bibles or listens carefully for those without Bibles or who are illiterate. When they are done, have someone else read the same passage aloud again. This time, have everyone just listen to the passage as the person reads. When they are done, ask for a volunteer to retell the passage in their own words. When they finish, ask the group to fill in any points they feel were left out. Reading, listening, and retelling scripture is very important. It allows everyone time to think about the passage and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to them through his word. Retelling the passage allows them to think through how they can share this passage with someone outside the group. Allowing the group to add to the retelling encourages everyone to think about the main points in the passage. Even though going through the passage multiple times may seem repetitive and time consuming, the process helps develop healthy disciples and retain what you are learning. Okay, so this is, uh, this is really big here because this is where uh, and we go, and uh, we're gonna go into a, do, um, actually do an actual uh, DBS with you. The reading of the story, reading it again, the retelling of the story. You have to really break that down to your DBS because immediately, it's if you and if they are church folk, you know, by the time it's with church folk, immediately they'll they'll go in and say, "Well, this is what it's saying to me." But that's not what was, the, the, what was asked was, right. 
retell the story. Or they say, well, this is the point I'm getting out of it. That's, no. Retell the story. So you basically, after it's read twice, you basically want that person to tell what you heard the story. Not what it said to your heart, not what I can do. You want them to retell. And what that does, that trains them to listen to the story and not listen to what they can get out of it. Because, you know, our, our culture, our uh, American consumerism is most our members listen to what they, oh God, what are you giving me? What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? But this is discovery Bible study. So we got to retrain them to listen to what the, the story is being told. And what that does is that set up the questions comes out because you'll spend your whole uh, Bible study hearing what people are saying, this is what it's saying to me, this is what it's saying to me, this is what it's saying to me. When you're trying to get them to, what is it saying? Right. Not what is it saying to you. Yeah. What is it saying? Because Discovery Bible Study is all about discovering who he is. And when, you know, and the main thing, you know, my congregation tell you, I say this all the time, when we discover who he is, we discover who we are. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's the key on that. That's good. Okay. So we're going to stop right there. You can ask the questions if you want. Just make sure they know them because they've never seen them. Okay. On that 117. Okay, I'm sorry. I just finished that last part and then I will. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, let's, let's finish it. So you, who, who read that? I read that. Okay. By, sorry, it's fine because none of them have actually seen this before. I told them just a lot of you haven't seen the questions because we haven't done the soaps or anything. So this is the first time. Okay. Hello. Let's leave the inside. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, yes. Oh, I already. I, yeah. Are you already read? Yeah. I was okay, well, let's start right here then. Uh, Discovery Bible study. After your group retells the scripture, you can study the passage. Your discussion should be filled with questions that aid your discussion and get to the heart of the passage. Questions facilitate the discovery process and allow your group to interact with scripture and grow spiritually. You should use many of the same. The same questions you use for your personal devotion time as you interact with the scripture. This allows our interaction with scripture to be easily reproducible as we train other disciples. Below are the questions. Can we go ahead and read them? Yes. What did you like about this passage? Did anything concern you? Why? What does this passage teach us about God? What does this passage teach us about people? Is there an example to follow, a command to obey, or action to take? Sin to avoid, a promise to claim. With whom should you share this truth? Each discussion focused on scripture. If you or someone else in your group is knowledgeable of the Bible, it may be hard to avoid introducing outside materials into the study. The leader needs to work hard to limit the time, limit the sharing of popular <clears throat> opinions or extra biblical materials. These options and materials do not facilitate interaction with Scripture. Do your best to keep discussion focused on the Scripture and guided by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, you know, once again, and, and as we go in now, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, how to give instructions out because your instructions lay the foundation, okay, and it, and it, it comes, comes from this. Because, once again, I, I'm, I'm, I always think about human nature. And so I'm always guarding against human nature because human nature will try to take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So uh, when it when it comes to the uh, well, that word which says this also this allows us interaction with scripture to be read easily reproducible as we train other disciples, and that is the key. That's that's the key to everything we're doing. Is that you? It has to be in your mind. Can this person right across from me? Do what I'm doing. Okay. So, I hope do, all of y'all heard what he just said to you. Say you know, it again, Randy. That's it's, good stuff. It's, 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 it's there, but just remind them. Yeah. Can this person across me do do what I'm doing? Because if you can't do what I'm doing, then it's not reproducible. And therefore, I'm, I will put you into a consumer mode because you always be looking to me. Mm -hmm. But if I do it in a way to where you, uh, that you can see yourself doing it and just remind you the facilitator Holy Spirit is a teacher 
And so when you, when you keep that in your head, okay, I, I, and, and when I, you know, we go into the Bible study, we're going to talk about the questions and um, that last part. Do your best to keep discussions post, focused on the scripture and guided by the Holy Spirit. And that's where the battle is. That's, that's, that's going to be your battle in the DBS. And especially if it's all church folk. <laughs> right. Because you got church folk, you, there's always that one. I mean, it is. I've, uh, I've done this at Pastor Stockton's church for his, mm -hmm. and he had like 20 folk in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's always that one that wants to show how much they know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's a way you shut that down, and we're going we're gonna to demonstrate that. <laughs> we got to make disciples who don't become church folk. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> you, exactly. How do we do that? <laughs> you're really, what you, I mean, what you're doing, you're, you are, with church folk, you're going through the process of helping them to earn and learn wow. a whole lot of stuff that they learn that keeps it from being reproducible. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Um, it's crazy. I think I heard someone say one time, like, you have to undisciple them because they've been discipled in the wrong behavior. Mm -hmm. And so you have to re-disciple them in like, what you're actually saying, stay on track, yes. don't get off focus. But the reason they're doing that is because they've been discipled to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like undiscipling a disciple to re-disciple them, to disciple how they're supposed <laughs> to be. I don't know. Yeah. It's, yes, yes, yeah. yes. This might be a dumb question, but... No, no dumb question. <laughs> do, do we read this with our... Timothy's, or is this still like our mm -hmm. trainer guy? We like in your D and D class? Yeah. Oh yeah, you do it. So we're reading this. So what, yes. you do, what, what you're, you're doing, doing right now? What, what, what I'm doing right now, now is what you do with your D and D. This is an actual DBS. This is actually yeah, yeah. So they'll Timothy's. so yeah, so they'll know because we're reading this. Like, hey, we have to keep on track because we're reading. Yes, this. Okay. yes. And, and when you're training, you know, you, when you're training your, your Timothy's, and you demonstrate it to them, I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean. I did not deviate from this. Right. I mean, I stuck with it all the way through it. Yeah. You know, and it talks about where people try to bring in other stuff. No, no. Yeah. So, um, and, but you have to establish that at the, at yeah. the beginning. And yeah, you keep saying that, everybody else keeps saying that. David Nelm says the same thing. Dale McCauley says the same thing. Kevin says the same thing. They just say, stick with the book. Stick yes. Because we're so easy to want to sort of yes. order off stuff. Yes. I appreciate I appreciate you saying that about human nature. Yes, <laughs> because exactly. it really is bad. Yes, that's what you know. I mean, that's what you're dealing with, and you know, you put a little religion with human nature. Now you got a monster. By the way, right I'm writing that down. Yeah. That's, that's, good. Right there, that's, a no, that's another sermon, guys. Right there. Uh, seven headed monster. Yeah. There's eyes and horns in there. Yeah. Exactly. By the way, I hope you heard. Make sure you okay. I'm just going to reiterate what Rondi said as a remembrance. Listen, it's not that their insights aren't good. That's not the key. What it is is it's killing reproducibility. Right. Mm, right. It kills it. So you can't allow it because it actually mm. stops. It changes the focus. So the way to keep it reproducible is to keep it exactly like he's telling you, the simplicity of doing it and, uh, you know, Right, that that's going to be the key behind that the reproducibility component. Mm -hmm. Rodney, how much time do you spend prepping for a DBS? Oh, well, that's a good thing. None. Just go right in. Spend no time right. prepping for it. Right, and 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 I do it on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going in once again as a facilitator, yeah. and not the teacher. Uh, if I prep, I'm going to want to teach. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Holy yeah. Spirit is the teacher. Holy Spirit is the teacher. Sure. I wrote that down when you said that a minute ago. Yes. That, that yeah. was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Spirit is the teacher. Exactly. We're facilitators. Exactly. He's the teacher. That was convicting when you said that because we're so yeah. easy to try. Yeah. Yes. Teach. Yes. Teach. And I can't remember oh, what's the, the, the pastor uh, in Alabama. Malcolm. 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 Yeah. Malcolm. He, he, I mean, he said that, and, and it was freeing to me. It was freeing because he said, um, you have to take off your preacher's hat, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that freed me from being a preacher. Mm -hmm. I'm just facilitating. Yeah, and the well, pressure too. And the pressure. It right. makes it easier for everybody. The ones you're trying to reproduce too. Don't yes. think they have to 
meet your whole standard of teaching or something. Exactly. You know, and know what you know. Exactly. They won't be intimidated. They'll exactly. just be like, let's just read the book. All right. Exactly. Let's go from there. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do a, a uh, DBS. You can do 18 too. I was okay. gonna say, you should go ahead. Don't feel pressed okay. for time. Oh, okay, go, go, okay, okay, okay. Just go ahead and okay. finish that last All right. page. All right. Uh, <laughs> and then show them. Yeah. Yeah. So commitment, knowledge of God's word must lead to obedience and sharing with others. This next step begins with a statement and a question. Since we believe God's word is true, what must we change in our lives to obey God? Everyone in the group should answer this question before finishing. If they already obey the scripture, have them share how they obey it and how they have trained others also. Ask if there is anything they need to do to increase their obedience to God's word in this area of their life. Keep this part of your time focused on specific action steps. And that's, that's once again, um, you have to continue to encourage them, uh, once again, that your growth comes through your obedience. Amen. Okay. And I always let them know this, um, if you want if, to keep from just being content, Obedience has to come from this, because otherwise, you know, you can you can get the word and get puffed up with it, mm -hmm. but until obedience takes place, uh, it, it doesn't become real in your life. And if it don't become real in your life, it can't you can't share it for it to be real in somebody else's life. Right. Can I ask you a question? Then? Yes. Suppose because the idea of having a discovery Bible study is to invite unbelievers in, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And so when you make the statement, since we believe God's word is true, what about, do you ever have anybody be challenging with that to say that they're not there yet, they don't actually believe God's word is true or, or they don't accept it as God's word? You see what I mean? Yeah. If you're inviting unbelievers in. Right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, I, I can truly say, and my my son is, is his, his, his DBS is filled with mostly uh, unbelievers. And his, his experience to me is that um, he hasn't had nobody really challenge. Now he's had folk like afterwards, like I'm not sure, you know, uh, help me out with this. Right. Because you know, you're gonna see, you're gonna see in my, you'll see in the instructions I give that the DBS won't be the time for that, that you'll see it'll be afterwards, if that's the time for that. Right. And I'm trying to, it was one, it was one time where uh, something was being said, and I could tell one of the other ones was like, oh, "I'm not really sure about that." Mm -hmm. And so, but I got, I got, I got with them afterwards, and then once we broke it down and everything, and, and they were they were able to see it. But you know, once you the the actual DBS, the actual Discovery Bible Study, is because once again you'll chase rabbits, right? You chase chase rabbits, and. and, and <coughs> I remember, what, I remember which one it was. It was when, uh, when uh, God called Abraham to sacrifice his son. That 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 gets him every time, mm -hmm. right? So he called Abraham to sacrifice his son, and so they was like, you know, why would why would? And so Caleb was like, I talked to I talked to you about it afterwards, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did he he shared a little bit because everybody has a whole lot of folk, but it was he said afterwards when the discovery Bible said it was over, he was able to share in the same group. About mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. one more. One more. If you have all unbelievers and there's a question, we we say yes, since the Bible's true. You could just say, let's just assume mm -hmm. that this scripture is true. Mm -hmm. if, if we assumed it was true, then how would it? How would the same story apply to your life? Mm -hmm. So they don't have to say I believe, but if it was true, yeah. what difference would it make? Mm -hmm. And so right. you could at least get them to consider that instead. In fact, we'll make sure we just add that like little nuance to the book. That's probably a little, because um, because you're right. There, there will be some, but as he said, most of them will just kind of buy into it. They won't fight you with well, it. Well, they'll respect you. Doing. They'll respect you. Yeah, yeah that's there, right. But, but it is most. good to give the freedom because right yeah. in their mind, if they're going, well, I don't believe it's Some true. are bold just, enough. Though, right, right. You know, some, that's that. correct. <laughs> Especially if they're early on and it's all unbelievers. So just say, if we assumed it's true, what what implication does it have? 
Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. And, and one thing you're going to find out what you what you discover in Bible studies, especially with non-believers, the fact that they came, mm -hmm. they're they're really open in their searching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're really open yeah. in their searching. Yeah. So, and that's that's why they they are much more. Ref I, I, don't yeah. remember, I love my church folks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they but they just much more refreshing yes, right. unbelievers because they don't have no preconceived. Bible knowledge mm -hmm. or whatever. If they do have, you know, it's just, it's very small. Yes. So they're really open. Man. I mean, they're really open to. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. They're showing up. Holy Spirit's working on. Yes. It. Yeah. That's, exactly. That's good. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Pastor Rondi and yes. Kevin, one one observation that I have noticed since yesterday. Anytime that you guys read through this book and there is a bold word, mm -hmm. without fail, you or even Pastor Rondi have stopped and not necessarily address that word, but what you just, what was like uh, Scott just read, you know, uh, since we believe God's word is true, and then it says what in bold, like I have noticed over the last two days that both of you stop and explain that particular passage. If it doesn't have bold, you just keep trucking on. Yes. Because all these other guys that have read stuff that don't have bold, you just you didn't stop. Is that right. something y'all train to like draw attention to say, maybe we need to park right here and just kind of explain this, or is that just coincidence? Um, I think we're question. modeling exactly what we want you to do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ronnie's sure. doing a great job. Exactly. Listen, it's going to be natural for you to do it, just like yeah. you just did. It's very natural because we know what you're going to like. He knew what you were thinking, Art, and said, "Guys, if you don't," by the way, his quote was, "Let's just say it." Your growth comes through obedience. That's how he followed up. You must get them to do that because the growth comes through obedience. I wrote that down. I'm like, that's a great, great yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the content. It's the obedience. So what is it you're going to do? Your growth comes through obedience. And um, so, yes, that would just be natural for you to emphasize that. Okay. And, and you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, as, as far as it's concerned, because when I, when I was, was teaching this and I saw the bold, you know, once again, it's, it's, it's intuition from the Holy Spirit. That if it's bold, right, then that's that is that's Important. serious, yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? That's serious. Yeah. So, and then once I started doing DBSs, then I seen why it was bold, and that's what's going to happen mm -hmm. with you. Once you start doing DBS, you'll see why certain stuff in there is bold. Those are points that you that that them who have done this book have seen that if they don't get that part, then. Um, they're not getting everything that they, they should get around. That's good. And so y'all have already gone through the look back, uh, looking up, and uh, looking forward. So Kevin, it's now yep. good time? Yeah, it's good okay. time. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so we're going to do a, 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 a discovery Bible study. And uh, now, oh, that's, that's here's awesome. another lost art. <laughs> <laughs> Another lost art in our culture, in our American religion, or <laughs> I can look at it, is uh, Bible. <laughs> okay? Right. Using an actual Bible. When I uh, go to, to the DBS that I, that I participate in, where it's, it's, it's one of my Timothys that's, that's teaching it, I bring my Bible. Because once again, uh, who do we have that's in the class, Kevin? He he prints. Oh, Chris, Chris yeah, 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 Chris. And and I had also done research that you know, reading your Bible, once again, on paper, this is three dimensional. Yeah. The phone is two dimensional. Our brains, uh, when uh, the phone does not get the fullness that your actual paper Bible. Yes. So when I get up in the morning to spend my time with the Lord to get the word, yeah. I use my actual Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't use my phone. The only thing I use my phone for is I I, I will read uh, uh, Upmost for its highest. Yeah. Uh, I'll read that uh, when I go to the bathroom. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, it's not your utmost. But yeah, 
I don't so, think I'd play solitaire. But, uh, <laughs> and so you want to encourage your Timothy <laughs> and, and the folk in the Discovery Bible study, bring your Bible. Because one thing it does, it trains them to read the Bible. Amen. All right? yeah. Because we live in a culture where that's just, you know, once again, it's old fashioned. Right. Do it. But it's all about spiritual growth. It's all about spiritual growth. Yeah. Okay? So let's let's uh, let's get into this. We're gonna go to Joshua. Uh, chapter Should we one. grab our Bibles? Uh, yes, sir. You need the Bible. You need By the way, Bible. it's just you can go do research later. It is yeah. neuroscience arguing that really the three D versus the two dimensional. How much better your brain perceives and remembers three D versus two D. Like what he's saying. Believe so. It's it's worth checking the into. Are, they're not buying that. Right? Uh, that might be true, but. <laughs> You said Joshua what? One? Joshua okay. chapter one. We're going to look at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've, I've had some leaders in my church. They, you know, um, they just, they believe their phone is just as good. I'm like, especially in the time now, follow the science. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 the is not. Okay, so. Uh, we're assuming that we've already done the look back. Okay, so we've already done the look back. Now we're going into the look up. So, be, well, before I go into the look up, I'm, I'm going to give you instructions. Okay, so basically, we're going to uh, read the scriptures that we have. One of you going to read it, and then another of you will read it also out loud. And then... Um, I need one of you to retell it, to retell the story that you heard. Now, here is the the, the, the most important part that, that I, you know, I, uh, for, uh, for the one who retells the story, I need you to retell what you heard. I need you to retell the story that you heard. Uh, we don't want to hear, and, and, and once again, you know, I'm pretty bold, guys, and so <laughs> if, if you go ahead and be bold with your people, they, I mean, they're good. Okay, so uh, we we uh, we're not looking for your perspective on this. We're not looking for what you hear God speaking, saying to you, which is great. That's great. But when you retell it, I need you to retell the story because what's happening is in this Discovery Bible study, and you're going to find out as you do this week after week after week, you're going to be amazed at one when you see who God is and you see what he is saying, you, you're going to be amazed at how you actually grow spiritually and you don't even know you're growing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be just amazing to you. So, uh, and then we're going to go into asking questions. When I ask the questions, you have to be really listening because I want you to answer the questions that are asked. Okay? <laughs> answer the questions that are asked. Now, the Word of God, the whole Bible is powerful. I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, the whole Word of God is powerful. So the past the scriptures we need, that, I mean, that we're going to read, don't need any help from any other scriptures. It don't need help from the book of Psalms. It don't need, need help from the book of Revelations. It don't need help from uh, Proverbs. This Word that we're going to read here in a few minutes is so powerful that it needs no other help. It 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 will stand on its own. Because that's just how God's word is. So uh, if a scripture comes up in you, oh, Psalms, this, 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 you can write it in your notes or whatever, but that's not the time to share it. Okay? That's not the time to share it. That could be just for you at that moment. Mm -hmm. But I want you to focus on the scriptures and ask the questions based off the scriptures that we ask because. That's where Holy Spirit is going to be speaking to you, and that's why he's going to be talking to you. Now, um, I am a, I'm a talker, okay? And, then, and then, you know, this is what I tell them. I'm a talker. As a talker, I need guidelines, okay? I don't know who in here is, could be a talker. You might be just like me. So I'm going to give you the same guidelines I would give myself if I was sitting where you're sitting. The way Holy Spirit is going to talk, uh, the way he's going to teach us, he's going to speak through all of us. And they're going to be precise, 
rather quick answers to the questions being asked. If we allow the Holy Spirit to do that, when he speaks through you, it's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. It's going to, and so it's going to, I mean, it's a, so, so we ask you, keep your answers, you know, pretty quick. When you hear the Holy Spirit speak, say it, and then we'll, we'll keep moving. Okay? Um, I don't, I personally don't believe we have to be here for hours to do a, a, a DBS. We don't. We have a lot of time, which is more than enough time, if we follow the instructions. Okay? At the end of this DBS, uh, we're going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. There's a question on here that's going to challenge you. And, um, but let me tell you, man, that challenge is going to bring so much life to you. So, are you ready for the DBS? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Do you have, so, as you teach this, do you go over this every time you meet? Those I, same parameters. I, I go over this every time there's a new person. Now, okay, well, first let me say this. Let me say this. Uh, I would say for the, the first four to five times, yes. Okay. You know, let's say, let's say it's the same group, nobody knew. Same group, nobody knew. Yes, because you've got to get that in them. Yeah. you got to get in them. Uh, I, I had, a, I had a, a, a pastor from another, another church that was coming, and his church shut down for the pandemic, and he came, and he stopped coming. And so I, I, I had to talk to him four times afterwards to where I was talking to him before. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so he, 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 finally, he finally stopped coming. Mm. You know, that's why. Now, I wanted him to keep coming, but he didn't want to follow the guidelines. And I kept telling him, listen, because, you know, as a pastor, I said, you're not the teacher. We want the Holy Spirit to teach us. Mm. He's going to teach us. Mm -hmm. He's he going to use your voice, but if you get in the teaching, and I would have to call him on the carpet many times. I said, no, we're not talking about Ezekiel. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're in Joshua. And uh, I, I hated he left because I really thought he was going to be uh, Timothy and something he would take back to his church yeah. to share. So. But you're going to get some of those. You're going to get some of them. You know, so... Don't seek the whole ship for one. Yes. Now, when you mentioned, you know, parameters, and maybe I missed it because I was looking in here, uh, you said to keep it short and not to, do you ever say, like, under five, under three? Like, because some people, like, short to me is, like, two minutes. Somebody else could right. be, like, short to me is ten, you know? Right. So, like, do you ever give the parameter of, like, hey, guys, let's keep it under three minutes or four minutes or whatever that timeline, time right. frame is, or do you just say keep I've, it short? I've never given a timeline. Okay. You know, I've... I've I, 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 you know, I would tell everybody, hey, watch how other, watch how everybody else is doing it, and you'll get a sense of, and, and really you'll get a sense when Holy Spirit is, 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 is talking. It's good to know. No, yes. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So Joshua, chapter one, verse seven uh, through nine, and if you're uh, reading a different version, then uh, well, just tell me what version you're reading. That way we know what version you're coming. From. So who wants to? Who wants to do the first one? I'll read. Okay. That's just seven through nine? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Only be strong and very... Oh, excuse me, ESV. Yeah. Okay. The first one. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you, sir. Uh, somebody else? Read it with this passage. I'll read. Okay. Um, NLT. Okay. 
Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Thank you, sir. Who would like to uh, retell the story that was just read? I'll try. Okay. Uh, so, he told him to be strong and courageous. Uh, to follow the law of Moses. As he was commanded to do pour his time into it uh, you know, day and night um, and that through that he will find success and then reminded him at the end again to be strong and great awesome awesome does anybody want to add anything to the story he just he just shared he said meditate on it he said meditate on it he said meditate on my word day yeah. and night day and night and don't deviate from it to the right or to the left. Mm -hmm. Don't deviate. Awesome. Awesome. And he says he's going to be with them. So. He's going to be with them. Awesome. Yes. Yes. And I, he kept seeing you would do those things, do what he was telling you to do, and then the other things would come. Good. Okay. Okay. So now I'm, I'm going to go into the questions. And uh, once again, I want you to listen to the questions. I want you to answer the question. Now, this is where, this is where, uh, this is where Holy Spirit, this is where, you know, this is where you're going to hear him. Now, if you was listening then, I heard Holy Spirit talking just then. When he shared the story, and then when y'all started bringing those bits and pieces. And so that's how uh, this DBS is going to go forward. And that's, that's. That's the gist of it, okay? And as I ask the questions, like I said, because once again, we're, uh, you, you, you're gonna hear me say human nature a lot. <laughs> human nature, our one of our weakest points is listening. So we have to work on listening. So the first question is, what did you like about this passage? What did you, like about this passage? I have a pathway to be prosperous or successful. Mm. That's exciting. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He so, says, the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. I mean, that's a big deal. Mm. No matter where you go. Yes, sir. The Lord be with you. That's what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I like the word meditate because um, it's different than maybe just reading it mm. or just like mm. I, getting it off your to-do list type of thing, but right. meditating on it, reflecting, going on a walk and thinking about it. So. Yes, sir. He said meditate day and night. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Um, I like the going with the human nature. It's, it, it tells us to not be frightened and don't be dismayed, mm -hmm. but to be strong and courageous. Yes. yes. Which goes against the nature. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I like that part too, but I, re I read the word afraid as, as worry. Mm. It says don't, don't be so full of worry. Mm. It's gonna be, that's how it speaks. Yes. Don't be so worried. The thing I liked about it was um, when he says, uh, you make your way prosperous. You make your way successful mm. by doing what he said. Mm. Anybody else before we go to the next question? I want to ask you something real quick that just come to mind just in that moment. I mean, we're all sort of here engaging and talking do you have the situations where nobody said anything 
nobody answers, it gets kind of quiet and, and awkward, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And I heard you wait for us to say before you said what yours was. Yes. So you were being polite and not, you know, giving us time because we were responding to what happens because you always have that at some right, point. Right, right. Just everybody's quiet or whatever, nobody says anything, so. Silence is good because, uh, especially with, with unbelievers or, or new believers, because they're really trying to hear the Lord. And many times, you know, we'll make the mistake because we like that. Silence is not good, and, and, and we we'll jump in, and, and and it might be we might jump in at that time that that is that you know, Holy Spirit speaking to them. Mm. So don't look at silence as a bad thing, because silence is that. I mean, they're they're really trying to hear the Lord. I, I think sometimes it just takes time for your mind to actually engage with what you're trying to. It just takes time. You can't yes. do it real quick. Yes, exactly, exactly. So next question is this, and so. I mean, so uh, I I allow that question because it's, you know this is a training. But if, if you you know let's say let's say you would ask me the question said let's say you said uh, why does he tell us to be strong and very courageous right let's say you you you, you ask that question mm -hmm. then I would say okay we're gonna we're gonna go through these questions and then we'll we we'll come back to or I can get with you after with them. Right. And, and and the reason why uh, you you want to shut questions down because human nature again. This is right. If you ask right, <laughs> if you ask one, then he wants one, and then you never get through. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and and and, and in fact, I, I meant to get that's that's also part of my instructions. If you have any questions, then we can get together afterwards. So that's mm -hmm. I, I'll also add a part of my. Second question, what challenge or inspired you the most? What challenge or inspired you the most? Uh, when it says be careful to do, uh, the ESV says be careful to do according to all that is written. Like making sure that like I have intent and really know and understand and so that I can live according. That I'm not loosely trying to live out my faith, but I'm careful in doing so. Mm. Amen. To be careful to do it. Not like for me, just that God is with God is with me. Or that is with you. Okay. So so that that challenged you and inspired you the most that he's with you? Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. What inspired huh? for me God the challenge is meditating on day and night. A lot of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 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 I think the, you know, when he says in, in verse six, you know, be strong and courageous. I mean, you, you hear that forcefully there. Mm -hmm. And then he backs it up again and says, only be strong and courageous again. But then mm -hmm. he like caps it with, have I not commanded you mm -hmm. to be strong mm -hmm. and courageous mm -hmm. and don't be frightened by anything or dismay? You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, it, he's like really trying to instill this courage. Yes. That 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 challenge and then at the same time, inspiration. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Because you see where that'll take you. Yes. You know. I think maybe that clarifies maybe the inspiration for me because he's with me. Mm, okay. Yeah. Now, okay. Now, because I know he's with me, um, then that command that he tells me, well, I'm with you. Mm. So that inspires me. Okay, don't forget I'm with you. So be courageous because yeah. I'm right there with you. So, that's good. Yeah, that's, that makes more sense. So. Yes, sir, that's good. What inspires me is that if I meditate day and night and I don't deviate, I'll be successful. Mm -hmm. So there's a plan of action mm -hmm. for me. I need, you know, so mm -hmm. meditate, don't deviate, success. Amen. Great. Yes. Right. yes. Inspire, sir. That is good. That's inspiration, yes. The all encompassing words challenge. Okay. Um, obey all of mm. the law. Okay. Mm -hmm. The law is always on your lips mm -hmm. to do everything. But then also, you're talking about you know being inspired. He's with you. That they're all encompassing, but.
but then the all-encompassing one at the end of verse 9, the Lord will be with you wherever mm. you go. Those words are really challenging. I trust that he'll be with me wherever. Yes. I'm challenged that I can actually do all, <laughs> everything, all right. always. All right. Amen. Anybody else? The thing that, that, that challenged me here was uh, uh, that he actually expects me to do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, he says it like, it's in you to do it. It's like it's that's mm -hmm. in me to do it. I'm expected to do it, and at the same time, inspired that he actually expects me to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah he believes so in me. Yes. 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 Okay. Did anything concern you? And if it did, why? That he expects me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what came to mind. And I'm like, I got nervous when he said that. <laughs> I wasn't concerned so now. <laughs> and so, so why does that concern you? I know me. <laughs> okay. Yes. Like, okay. I, I, I mean, I don't obey all of the law. Mm. I, I don't have the law always. Mm. Um, I don't do everything I've written. Right. I mean, even the last 24 hours here in this group, and it still has not been always on my list. Mm. You know? yeah. um, and I have not done everything at all. Mm. So I, I guess it's just like, I, know I look in the mirror and see myself fall short an awful lot. Okay. And so I guess I'm concerned, like, what if I can do that? Mm. Yes. And, and you know the, the, the good news about the scriptures and he was saying about him him expecting us that's where his, his grace and his, his mercy his mercy is there for us and uh, his patience to work with us through that you know and um, but the good thing is that uh, it is a concern to you because when it's a concern to you, then that means you will give attention to it needs to be given. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you can do the best of what he's placed in you to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the, did anything concern me was maybe the fact that I would be frightened mm -hmm. and that I would, not 100% sure what dismayed, I mean, I think I kind of know what, <laughs> but to be frightened or dismayed, like that I would fall back into that because I know my nature. Right. I, I think that, that does concern me that uh, that I would be frightened of whatever comes my way throughout the day. Yes, that's good. You know, you see, uh, you mentioned like good success and being prosperous. So like the thing that would concern me would be uh, what, what happens if I don't? What's the opposite? Like you know, I have to really take this seriously because you know, if I don't follow this, opposite is probably going to happen. Mm. Mm. That's good. You know, that's good. That's that's a great way to look at the word. Mm. And I, I, I first look at it like that too. What is the opposite if I don't do this? Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking the same, I had the same thought, I was going to say the same thing and I was, because I was looking at the four thens, you know, it's like, do this, do all according to all that is written. For then you, um, you will make your way prosperous. And you said that a minute ago. You will make your way. You will make your way. Right. I have a question. Yes. So somebody's asked that same question. What if, What happens if that happens? And they're asking a question. Do you wait till the end of the class to address it? Yes, and. and, and uh, and I'm gonna tell you why. This is this is what, and, and, and here's been my experience. When somebody would have a question, when I waited to the end of the class, it's you know once again because Holy Spirit is a teacher. It is amazing how at the end I I go to them 
hey, he said, man, he, he answered that question. Uh -huh. In the, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it was either somebody said something or it was just, I, I got my answer. So that's where we have to trust Holy Spirit to, uh, to do that. Because, like I said, questions are, I mean, when I say they're dangerous, they're dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's hard, it's, it's, you know, if you've ever ch chased a rabbit, it's hard to catch a rabbit. And when that, mm -hmm. when that rabbit gets running, man, <laughs> you know, it's, you, you, then you're trying to reel everybody in because everybody's chasing rabbits. So, uh, yes, sir. So how would you do that? Like, I let's just say I asked the question, and how would you say, hey, let's, would you just say, hey, let's wait on that and let's keep talking and then we can talk about it after? Or Yes, yes. I would say, you know, especially if, if they got some, I say, you know, either, either write it down or put it so in here. We'll give you a question. So, hey, I don't even know who this Joshua guy is. Who's who's Joshua and God? Why is God talking to him? Perfect. Them? Yes. And, and Just to answer like I'm the I'm guy. Right. Me. That's great. And, you know, that's that's a, that's a great question. And, I mean, see me immediately. Once we finish this, see me immediately, and I will I will talk to you about who, uh, who uh, Joshua is. But right now we just want to focus on, uh, focus on the scriptures. But seriously, I, I mean, I really want to share with you about who Joshua is. So, I mean, I'm not putting you off. I really want to share. Perfect. And if you, if you show that person that you really want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. good. Huh? Exactly how to do it. I love it. That's good. I got a buddy that would have been like, well, actually, a lot. most of us don't know who Joshua is. Can you just explain it now? Well, all of y'all say after class then, and I'm going to explain it to you. Right. Right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Justice would have. Well, can you? Yeah, you can yeah. make that an invitation. And if anybody else wants to know, exactly. hang out afterwards, we can talk about it. So yeah. Back to what we were looking at. That's good. <laughs> and, and, and that's yeah. also a good that's time to say, if you have any other questions, I can get with you after. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's good. Exactly. Okay, next question. Because truthfully, I'm the only one allowed to ask questions. <laughs> I like it. All right. So next question is, what does this passage teach us about God? He's all present. Mm. He's all. He wasn't. He's all present. He's all present. Amen. He's all present. He's for us. He wants us to succeed. He's for us, yeah. and he wants us to succeed. He yes. is strong and courageous, not frightened or dismayed. <coughs> he is strong and courageous. He is strong and yes. not frightened or dismayed. He is strong, courageous, and not mm -hmm. frightened or dismayed. And so the one who's strong and courageous is telling the one made in his image to be strong and courageous. That's good. Amen. Mm -hmm. He don't want me to be frightened. He don't want me to be afraid any more than I want my children to be afraid. Mm -hmm. You don't want your kids. My father don't want me afraid. That's good. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Awesome. His word is a big deal to him. His word is a big deal to him. Woo. That's some good stuff. He wants our way to be prosperous, and he wants us to have good success. Yes. He wants it. He, yes. yes. He makes promises. He says, I swore to their fathers to give them. Mm. So he makes promises, and, and he keeps his promises. So, so he's a promise-keeping God. Yes. Awesome. This is where I start to feel better. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just, because uh, it says, what does it teach us about God? Okay. Mm, okay. Awesome. Awesome. What did this passage teach us about people? We tend to deviate. We, te we tend to deviate? <laughs> to the right or to the left. Yeah. <laughs> We're weak and fearful. Mm -hmm. We're weak and fearful. So yes, having to speak commandingly to us, mm. but not be that. Mm. Mm. We, we, I mean, we need to be, we need to be challenged by God. We need to be commanded to do. Yeah, He does that. It, we have a desire to be successful. We have a desire. Mm -hmm. Excuse yeah. me. We have a desire to be successful. Amen. Also says that we don't naturally meditate on His Word day. Mm. That's right. That's that's not a natural meditation is not a natural. Let me say, meditation on God's word is not a natural. Thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, left to our own, we will talk about everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. Yes, sir. we're prone to turn to the right or to the left. 
I get what somebody probably said to DBA, but getting off track. Yes. We have the freedom to choose. We have the freedom to choose. Amen. That's good. Amen. We have the freedom to choose. He commands us, but he don't make us. That's right. Good. Good. I think we, in verse 9, it says that people forget because he asked a question, have I not commanded you? So he, I think he's, it says that people forget. Mm. So he's, yes. he's trying to remind us. Yes. That we yes. forget. And it does seem in verse 8, I know it's, it's come up a couple times here, but I've picked up on is that you will make your way prosperous that we are um, involved in our prosperity, right? Yes. And we are involved. It's yes. not just God saying, I'll do this thing. He says, right. no, you will be a prosperous. Right. You will, or you will, make, you will make your way. You're active. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. You're active mm -hmm. in this. You, you are an active participant. Yes, in, you are. In mm -hmm. what God's called you to do. Exactly. Okay, the next question is, is there an example to follow? In Meditate that passage. day and night. Meditate day and night. Yes, sir. Are you strong and courageous? Be strong yeah. and courageous. Yes, sir. Well, we're supposed to meditate, but we're also supposed to talk about it. Mm. Yes. Because it says not to depart from our mouth, so we're, we need to talk about what we're meditating on. So it, it, it literally needs to be coming out of our mouths. Mm -hmm. I think like a kind of a literal example here is he says that Moses, my servant, commanded you. So he's saying, do what Moses did. Do what Moses said mm -hmm. do. Yes. As an example. As an example, exactly. Moses was our example, exactly. and uh, to, uh, to do what he to do what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you see um, follow your leadership as an example in that? Mm -hmm. As Moses, my yeah. servant, yeah. Yeah. Yes. follow leadership. We're on. Is there an example to follow? Is that correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's the. It's not necessarily just to listen to what Moses said, but for us to be Moses and be like Moses to others around us to do the same. Because Moses set an example as well. Yes. And we're to be that example to others. Yes. In, in the, the intensity of that in following his example, he says, be careful mm. to do all these things. Yes. Be careful. That's good. So it's like it, it, we need to follow example of also commanding others to do this as well. Because it's God saying, I mm -hmm. have I not commanded you? Mm -hmm. Then Moses also commanded the people. So we, it would be our turn to command people to be strong and courageous and follow the word. And, and you know, and that's that, that's that's really good because once again, you know, the Lord's going to use you to help others, you know, and, and even to bring others mm -hmm. to the discovery Bible study. And so, and and if we follow His example, He's not like, uh, "Hey guys, you think about doing this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah command is a strong word, right? Yeah. Is there an action to take or avoid a call to obey? <laughs> yeah, it says do not. It says, to, I guess, an action to avoid is don't be frightened. Don't be dismayed. Okay. <laughs> don't turn to the left or the right. Don't turn. Okay. Amen. Meditate, you shall meditate. 
You should meditate, call to obey. Don't stop talking about. Yeah, don't let the law depart from your mouth. Or don't avoid that. Don't don't stop talking about it. Yes. He commands. What's that? He commands. He commands. Be strong okay. and courageous. Be strong mm -hmm. and courageous. Yes. I want to hear the only the pause right here. Now, you will start noticing uh, repetitive answers coming, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all by design, mm -hmm. because uh, repetition is the motor to success. So if I hear it, you know, faith comes right here, you hear mm -hmm. my word. If I hear it and I hear it again, I'm I'm walking away with that when I leave here. So don't don't you know like, like if you're teaching me, it's like uh, the temptation is to, well, if I ask this question, they've already answered it. Ask the question, because you want it. You, I mean, you you want repetitive answers. Okay. Because because that that I mean once again that that sticks with the hearers, and and sticks with the one who's saying. Yeah. So. So, so you don't think, well, I'm saying the same thing again. Well, but that's what you just heard Holy Spirit say. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, what if some, what if someone's like, hey, I know someone's already said this. Do you, do you kind of mention that like what you just did? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I say go ahead and say it. Yeah. Because that's what Holy Spirit just spoke to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I say, hey, yeah, go ahead and say it. Mm -hmm. You know, because folk will say, you know, a so so already say this, but you say it. Because even in this particular, what, I mean, what did it say? Yeah. Out of the word of your mouth. Out of, out of your mouth, right? Right, right, right? Out of your mouth. So. Mm -hmm. You said something. You want repetitive answers, but what did you say about repetitive? What is it? Oh, repetition. Now, this is not mine. I, I got this in the leadership meeting. Right. Uh, repetition is the motor to success. And that's the reason why you wanted to learn it the right way the first time. Mm -hmm. right. mm. It says avoid being discouraged. It says avoid being discouraged. Also, avoid being discouraged. That's, that's good. Any, any other examples to follow? Or uh, a call to obey? Well, it's, it's, it's teaching quite directly that God expects perfection. He mm. says the may all. So uh, I, I think it, it teaches us we can't we can't live up to God. Teaches that we what? That we cannot live up to God's expectation. It's right here. All. All. Right. And he don't say keep some of my law. Right. He, he says, says all. Can. He says keep all of them. He says all. Now the preacher and teacher in me is tempted right here. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> Because you know, once again, but yes. but I but, but, but I, you have to resist that. Right. Because and, and what we have to you have to trust that Holy Spirit will show him and everybody else who heard that later on what he means by that. Yeah. yeah. But the teacher in me wants to say, you know, once again, it's not perfection as we understand perfection. It's maturity. But anyhow, you know, but It'll come up, but you have to resist that. Oh. Yeah, you, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to fight with everything in you, because this is what we have to trust: is this is that um, Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher, mm -hmm. right? If He's the greatest teacher, what can I teach that's going to be better than Him? Amen. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't pull Him over to the side at the end of the class and try to address His thought of He has to be perfect. You would wait till he asks you, or let him go home with the thought to. Uh, I would, uh, I would really be led by the, by the spirit, but it would be afterwards. You know, if I'm like, if if you know, we're standing and we're chatting and stuff like that, and I feel a pull to him, I'm I'm, I'm going to go to him because at the same time, if Holy Spirit is dealing with him something, dealing with him on something. Uh, in that area, and then I can go in to try to lessen, you know, try to ease the pain. Then I could be, uh, you know, sliding in God's position. Amen. So what I hear you saying mm -hmm. is, and I just clarify for me, make sure I'm saying this right. Mm -hmm. 
what I hear you saying is you have spent hours in prayer, searching the Holy Spirit, studying the scriptures, and you believe that the Holy Spirit wants you to do more than anything else, reproduce disciples. You are going to then go and reproduce disciples. All right. And so at this very moment, that is, man, that is a rabbit trail. That's, that is theology we need to cover. But he's not going to ask me to, at this moment, chase that rabbit when he has clearly told me to disciple and reproduce disciples who will go and reproduce disciples. Right. That warrants this. Right. And so I'm going to stick this. I'll have to deal with that later. Am right. I understanding that? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And that's why our trust in the Holy Spirit has to be that, Lord, you're not going to allow him to uh, kill himself by trying to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know? And so we have to trust him, trust him in that. Because even, you know, we still on pause, because even in my, you know, in our own growing up and, and, and growing in the Lord, I remember growing in the Lord, I read something, and I said, man, I got to do that perfect. I got to go, you know. And then he had a way of showing me. Now, your perfection is not, uh, because once again, you know, our, the culture and the consumer mentality is that then we, we try to put God in the box. You know? and, and, and that's, you know, me wanting to teach him is putting God in the box. Mm -hmm. That is so counter. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, get, I don't know the right word, but it's just that, that's that's a you, we your wanna, brain's working like this, and you just feel a wrench, and it goes right because <laughs> we want to recorrect. We want to correct content. Right. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's it's really putting content back at the center. Oh, hold on, I got to correct that content. Right. And what we're trying to walk through is that's oh, really good. You no, know, the props stick with. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The real goal, not yes. the task. One way you can help if theology is wrong. My natural would be, I'm going to correct. But in a discovery process, you're helping them discover. It's great to invite the Holy Spirit. What question can I ask that will help course correct? Like, in a, in a way, even in this conversation, you said, it says I have to do all of this, got to be perfect. But it's also telling me I don't have to be perfect. And I'm like, but then you, then I'm like, well, where, where in this passage is it saying you don't That's, have to be perfect? Right, right, right. Well, right, it yeah, doesn't. Well, then it creates a tension. So, hey, let's process through that on our own time this week. What does it mean? What is God really calling you personally from this, from this Amen. passage? But then you bring, or if it's really crazy theology, it's where does this passage say that? Yeah, and then the other one would be, hey, how, and, and you just ask a question. Well, yeah. does it actually say that? And, and, so, and, 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 and I'm telling you the thing that, um, uh, like I said, I mean, I don't deviate is I'll just come back to the question. I just come back to the question. Can I give any? Can we do like a, another test experiment? Yes. Just to see how. Okay. Um, so let's just say I'm in the group and I say something because I know this will trigger everyone here. Um, <laughs> I say, man. Uh, so what I think I like, what this like I'm learning is that I just have to obey God's word and then I'm going to get a lot of money. Because it's a success. <laughs> yep. And so. And prosperous. Next. And prosperous. So, TV shows right. are built around that kind of thing. <laughs> so now, everyone's, everyone's brains are. <laughs> I just said that. How would you go about? Okay, let's navigate that. Um, okay, so so say it again. Say it again. So, so, so what are the thing you say? So yeah, like a good success, that means I'm going to, I'm excited now because I'm going to obey God. I'm going to get a lot of money because I money's an issue and I know mm -hmm. that it's as prosperous so that's what God's word says I'm gonna get a lot of money so I just said that right you just said that and I, I, I want to say to you that's a possibility <laughs> that's a Amen. possibility <laughs> when you do and you do get a lot of money make sure you come back I mean, I mean, that's a possibility. Yeah. You know, because I could, you know, once again, my temptation is to teach what prosperity and what biblical prosperity and success is. At the same time, I don't know what Holy Spirit is saying to him. Right. 
I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah. once again, I mean, and so that's that's the thing. That's what we have to. That's our our wrestling. That's our battle. Because we don't want nobody leaving out with the wrong, with you know, a wrong perception, or whatever. But that's still Holy Spirit's job. Hmm. So, just some thoughts that I, I guess. Aren't we supposed to like if we're shepherds and we're fulfilling our role? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it? And this is just um, my thought. Like, when aren't we supposed like if a sheep is wandering off? Mm -hmm. or isn't our job to help course correct in a sense? Yes. Um, so that they don't fall off the cliff and they have wrong theology or and I know that's content based, but just because I'm struggling with that internally right now because mm -hmm. my job would be like ah. Uh, Right, and I think all, do of us, it gently, all of us sitting here as pastors think like that too. Yeah, that's but what I that's, think too. You got to remember who you're actually raising up here to do this, and it's not all going to be shepherds and pastor teachers. Yeah. A lot of it's going to be just these Timothys that are stepping in and doing these Bible studies, and you know, and, understand and, and, the place too. And, and right now, mm -hmm. I'm not a shepherd. Right. So I'm oh, sure yeah. that's, that's what. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. right. That's exactly yeah, what I'm saying. He, like, he could be. Like like J C Penny, right? You might actually you might know more about J C Penny. <laughs> right. <laughs> but J C Penny lived off ten percent and he gave ninety percent away. Mm -hmm. And so what God may be doing is raising up a new J C Penny that would live kingdom first. And and mm -hmm. so to have the answer that that I, I possibly said it better. Yeah, yeah. I, I just that might, be, that might a be a possibility. Right, right. That, that, that's possible. possibility. We don't want to squelch. Yeah, I'm what, saying what the Holy general. Spirit may be saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think he chose a light one, really. I mean, one that would kind of trigger yeah. us, like you said. Yeah, still was kind I, of light because something, you know, very crazy could well, have been that, said. And that's what I was wanting to ask. Like, what if somebody says well, something just that's way out there? You know what I mean? Like, I, it's surprising how often I get this question. But I'll see my pets in heaven, right? <laughs> and I. Well, that's why I chose I'm something saying, from the text. That yeah, was text. Obviously, obviously, you Just, might. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, I think, but you kind of, see, I think you've kind of addressed it. <laughs> right, right. With, uh -huh. It's like, I'm going to let the Spirit lead. Yeah, yeah. And I have to get out of the way. And I think that's going to be probably one of my biggest issues is, Chris, you better get out of the way. Right. And so, because, again, you do have that natural, like, because I just want to teach. It's, it's, it's what we've been called to right. do. And so maybe, I, I do like how you responded to that. Well, maybe. Yeah. But in that moment, it, it, to say, um, but maybe that's a conversation we have, you know, after. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and let the, listen, if after the meeting is over and everything is all done and the Holy Spirit does his thing, right. it might be a viewpoint or it might be, you know, because you felt that way, you're like, hey, I want to talk to this guy more about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, and, and then let the Holy Spirit kind of lead and guide that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just, right. Right. Yeah. Hey, I want to jump up to two quick things because we do need to finish it up. But we're gonna we're gonna ask questions forever. It's totally good. Hey, do you remember, you just mentioned the role of a pastor? But make sure what's the goal of the pastor? Yeah. yeah. No, but and that, that's it. just what I'm. But say it. What's goal the goal? Is to multiply. Multiply. Yeah. This group, the goal is to be able to multiply yeah. it yeah. too with our group. So, so by the way, I'm you're thinking that's right. That's you're right. Conflict and that. then, but the one other thing I would add too, um, again, because the Holy Spirit, when it, I almost always grab afterwards. But I, it doesn't mean I would answer the question. Remember, you could say, hey, guys, how about uh, as part of our assignment, for, you're done, we do I will say, so we're going to do them in a minute. But, you, hey, guys, why don't this week we read James chapter 1 and 2 together, and then let's talk about what God taught you next week. And I might pick a passage that might deal with the exact questions that were stated, right? Yeah, right. So, again, but let them go off and start doing it, and then let them come back, and then just let that become part of natural dialogue so you can direct them without answering them. And, again, the exact same questions they're doing here are the exact same questions they will have in their soaps time. Yeah, right. So if they go back into doing this on their own, mm -hmm. you just funnel them towards the Scripture, like, go look at what prosperity was there. Go look at it here and, and let them see it. Start guiding them in that direction. And it can be ever so subtle. Now, the negative of that is, remember, the average person in the group can't do that. Because they don't naturally know all of Scripture to say this is where you go to. Yeah, yeah. Which is why you can't start doing it now. Because then the first question mm -hmm. he asks is, can he do this when we're done? If they can't do it, don't do it. Right. Because it's just killed reproducibility. Right. So you yep. you either subtly slide it in at the end, or not so subtly. But uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, because yeah, you yeah. can just tell them, hey guys, it's in a, or 
um, you know, just like he's he's done it great. Just let it let that tension in. But remember the long term goal. We you're dealing with, by the way, forty minutes right now. I'm looking at you for the long term, the whole foundation. Mm. So remember, I'm trying to answer that foundation over a period of time, not just the moment. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm going, okay, what well, that's and again, like he said, I man, I loved it when you said because it's so true. I when you don't answer the questions, it's amazing. Say, let's talk about it at the end and how many will say, Oh, mm -hmm. it got answered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like it just, it did get answered right yeah. here because God and by the way, it got answered through Darren. It didn't get answered through him. Right. Mm -hmm. Or I just sensed it went, oh, I reread the scripture and it hit me like that. So yeah. okay. By the way, let's I want to practice, I want to make sure. Let's do the, uh, we want to close this out with the look forward, because y'all need to experience a look forward, and then we'll do more evaluation and questions at the end uh, that comes along with it, so. Great. Um, hey, Kevin, yeah. is, is, yes. is, is okay to do, I want to do the very oh, No, no, yeah, you, no, you, yeah. right, just move okay. towards it, yeah, I was okay, just making it. sure, because okay. I realize these guys are going to pound you with questions, but I want to make sure they go, oh, wait, I got to make them have the experience. Yes. Well, in your group, I wouldn't allow this many questions. Right. Mm. No, right, because right, we, exactly. like in that sense, oh, we yeah, just killed yeah, people. Yeah, but I get right, it, it's us. But we like you right. almost right. You have to right. do it, and, and then then it's easier. But so just just keep right. following on. Okay. The, uh, the very last question. This is this one here is really important. With whom should you share this truth with? It? And so uh, I just adopted. Did Kevin just leave? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I just adopted this right here. Okay. So I, so so I'll say okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna. When I ask you this question, we're gonna bow our heads for 10 seconds. Mm. Okay. Whoever you see when you bow your heads, that's who the Lord is telling you to share that with. Okay? So, so the question is, who would you share this truth with? So we're gonna bow our heads for 10 seconds, okay? Bow now. Okay. So who did you see? Matt Travis. Matt Travis, okay. Chris Muffet. Chris Muffet? My son Cal. Your son Cal? Uh, Matthew Wheeler. Matthew Wheeler? It's weird, man. Before I saw Ramses, before we bowed, when I bowed, I saw Beatrice. I don't know which way to go now. Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> yes. Um, I'll about this. My wife and a student. Okay. That one my wife as well. Okay. Jordan Brock. Jordan Brock was my son. I was correct. And I need to correct. Actually, the first person I thought of before I bowed my head was my wife, so that's two. So. Okay. And I and I, I saw my daughter. Mm. Okay, my daughter. Yeah. Now, uh, Kevin, I just adopted this yep. with, with the DBS. Is this? This is very important because this is really important for your spiritual growth. Part of you, when you share this, when you share this, what you, what, what he just given you, and what you, what you, everything you've heard, when you share this with that person, this is where you are going to grow exponentially mm -hmm. spiritually. Okay. Now, here's the thing about it is, you have 24 hours to share this. <laughs> now, why 24 hours? Because after 24 hours. It will be gone. You won't share it. You won't share. I'm telling you from experience. Oh, it will be gone. You will not share. If you don't share with them within 24 hours, you will not share it. Calendar. Period. We should wait today. Okay. And I'm talking from from experience. I I, I left 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 DBSs, and then it was on my heart to share something with a strong. And while I was going home, Holy Spirit was like, call him, call him, call him, call him, call him. <laughs> I didn't call. By the time I got home, family life hit. Yep. They never got to call. Now, the person the Lord showed you to share it with is waiting on you to share it with. Mm -hmm. He has them ready. They are ready to hear what he wants you to share. So if you think, oh, they don't want no, they, they're ready. Because he would have showed you. Mm. Mm, they're ready. How do you share it? Huh? 
how do you share? I, just, I was in a Bible study today and thought of you, blah, blah, blah. Or do you, like, like how would you share? Yes, yes, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. Is, 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 is right, the though. concept of what God showed you, the repetitive, like, the, 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 the don't be, you know, a, like, afraid and, and don't be dismayed, like, be courageous? I mean, is that, like, the concept, or am oh, I going to walk through? That's that's definitely the concept. Okay. But but the way you share it, hey, you call it, listen, uh, I just left this, because this is also a potential person to come to the Discovery Bible study. Yeah. So I just left this this new, uh, it's called Discovery Bible Study, man. And listen, uh, the Lord laid on my heart to share with you yeah. what I learned. You know, don't 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 be ashamed. Hey, the Lord laid He laid you on my heart, and they're like, the Lord laid you on my. Heart. I mean, laid me on you. The Lord laid you on my heart. If they say that, that's a big deal. Yes, right. yes. And they then, use that kind of language. Right. That's yeah. a big deal. Right. Right. Because, because once again, you know, even with you know, world of friends, they're not used to that type of language. But you being who you are. I would say this too. I had a conversation with my son last night over a situation that I wish wasn't going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, situations we have, we wish we no, weren't yeah. in and didn't have going on. They got too grown. So. But as you said, who comes to my mind? It was immediately him this morning. So last night has now played into this morning. So I don't need to discount what was going on last night, even though I wish it wasn't happening. Right. But it's something's got to be dealt with. Right. But God's working in this process. You see what I'm saying? Yes, yes. But that 24-hour rule is so important. Love it. It really is. Well, and I like that you said, bow your head for 10 seconds in the first person. Yes. It comes. That's it. And that's being very intentional. Instead of just saying, Think of somebody you shared somebody. this with, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, right, right. And, and like, like, like the preacher that was the one that left. He would always say, "My family." So I would say, "Who in your family?" Right. Mm-hmm. You got a big family. That's a big. Who? Right. right. Because that's another religious way of saying you're not going to share. <laughs> you're, just, you're, not <laughs> you're not. If you don't get specific, they're not going to share. That's good. Yeah. So yeah. just to you know, so next week. We would look back, mm-hmm. and we would say, "Who we shared it with? How that Did, shared it?" Yeah, you know? exactly. So you would say, "You would say to Anthony right now." You said, "My wife and a student." You would say, "Awesome." What's your student's name? Mm. That's fantastic. Which student? That's a great way of putting it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I could have told you the name. I just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> just for yeah. clarity's sake. No, I, I, I wasn't trying to pick on you. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Picture what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. So uh, next week we know. Yeah. I mean, you know. You just want to keep that that keep that general. Uh, I'm I'm gonna share it with the world. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you just said you're not gonna share it with nobody. You know, no, they so, met Facebook. Yeah, yeah. I'm, post, and, and what, so. I, I'm telling you now, uh, uh, you will get that one. Now we've got no, no that. Doubt. You know, no I'm doubt. gonna I'm gonna share it on Facebook. But I will say I say this. Yes, share it on Facebook. That's fine because folks want to read that. But. Yeah. He show you somebody specific, right? Mm-hmm. Because what are we doing? We're making disciples that make disciples. How do you keep track of all the people they said? So we all said different people. So next week, as we look back, how would I keep track of what? Scott well, said? you know, okay. Let's 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 look at look at your card again. Look at your card. Again. Yep. By the way, in, in your book, just so you know, as a leader, page one twenty six. So at the end of the chapter, we actually put in blanks for I will statements. Awesome. And as leaders, when other people, if, if we're in a group like this right now, as you all are going through your I will statements, either I would have be jotting them down or I'd have somebody. So you jot, jot them down, and often we have one list of everyone jotting them down, and that way we have it down. So you have each of them write their own in there. So they say, yeah, write, write that your name in your, next to your I will. And then when your I will next comes in, you write out the I will before they leave that night. Awesome. Now, I think to clarify, the. Um, this is one of the questions. It is. This isn't right. necessarily yeah. your so, I will statement. So what's going to happen with this question, though, he's about to go into the I wills right. with the prayer time, right. and then I promise you, out of that time, we'll come back, I think I should do this, and I need to talk to this person. It'll come a duel that they can write down both of those. So you'll right. see it as it unpacks right, right. now. That was my question. Okay. Yeah, and and on, the, on, the, on the look back, uh, what did you do? Share how you have been obedient to God. Talk about how you have followed through with the I will statements you made. Included in that 
Just you shared it. Sharing it. You shared it with I shared it with my daughter. Yep. No. And most will add it as an I will. So even exactly. if you all do it now, you'll see it's just a natural thing. Exactly. Exactly. So now we get ready to go into uh, the I will statements. Now this is I personally love the I will statements, and I, I want to share with y'all real quick how uh, the I wills has, has has helped me to grow as a pastor, yeah. has helped me to grow as a husband, has helped me to grow as a as a as a man, a dad, uh, because these I will statements, once again, human nature don't like like accountability, but let me tell you, your spirit man loves it, and you'll fall in love with it too. Mm -hmm. So basically, the I will statements, we're gonna bow our heads and. This is where Holy Spirit, now his thing about the I will, this is where Holy Spirit is telling you what he wants you to do this week. Okay? It's not your idea. It's not going to be your thought. It's going to be him telling you what he wants you to do this week. So we're going to bow our heads. You're going to listen for the Holy Spirit. Uh, 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 okay, what page you said? 126? Uh, they, 126 where they can write yes. yeah, Now, uh, Let's say you, you're doing a, a DBS, but you're not doing a DMD. This is DMD. So you want to say, hey, listen, I want you That's to bring the a training center, by the way. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, want, I want you to bring a notebook because we want to, we want to, you want to be able to track your I wills. You want to be able to write them down. That's another thing about I wills. It's like 24 hours. Um, write them down. Yeah. I'm the person, I don't like writing. Okay. <laughs> I don't like writing. But writing them down is another scientific proof is that writing it down once is like seven, saying it seven times. Mm -hmm. okay. So write it down. So write it, you know. So you want to encourage them, write it down. Okay. Now you say bring a notebook, but it has the space in the. Yeah, well, I'll. Now, if, if, well, now if, this is for if, the. For a, just a regular DBS. Not that's right. That's yeah. right. They, yeah, I was getting confused. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why I was trying to say it outside of. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is. This, see, yeah, they like, they uh, they got me with the acronyms. And we haven't used it yet here, so yeah. even oh, they're oh, going. Oh, that's oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not purposely. Just it's just. Yeah, yeah. So so DMD. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So right. So let's let's bow heads. Jesus name, amen. amen. Okay, now, so, so Kevin, now, now this is this is how we do it. I asked them, tell me I was first, and then write it down. That's that's fine. Yep. Okay, okay. So now, if if you know your first time, I'm going to share my I will. So my I will is I will continue to uh, to get in shape. Now you want to instruct them is this? You want to start start it off with my I will is okay. Somebody just say, and once again, I mean, I'm just a play on words, okay? Somebody say, well, I'm going to do such and such. What's your I will? Mm -hmm. I will do such and such. Okay. So you want to, yeah, I will. So let's let's start to my right, sir. What's, what's your I will for? Um, last night, I said something to my wife that was kind of harsh, and I gave her one of these, like, sorry about that. Okay. And uh, I need to fix that. So I will. You make that right, okay. I'm sorry to do this. Uh, are we getting the I will from the text? Or are we yeah. just doing an I will like? No, I mean, whatever you hear Holy Spirit say. Yeah. Okay. No, Which no. is probably prompted by text. But right. Whatever, like right. he just made the comment he just made was not, you could see that, it in the text potentially, but that's it's a personal right. thing. Right. That's gotcha. So, yeah. so we're not, we're not. We're not forcing our people back to the text. Right. Okay. We're giving them the freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, to just do a verse for the day and put it on a three by five card so that I can meditate on that every day. 
Mm-hmm. So your I will is again, your I My I will, yeah, is to, to write down a verse for the day on three by five so okay. that I can meditate on it. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. So my I will is to be strong and courageous even when I'm feeling fearful in situations. Okay. I want to be able to think about that okay. very specifically. So you want him to like be more specific? Well, I was, I was going to ask him, I, I, yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, is there any situation in particular you're thinking about right now? Just the future. Okay. Yeah. And 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 and, and so and so I'm okay with that, because once again, uh, especially when you get new believers, unbelievers, um, you don't want to push too hard with the I wills. Just pray that they have one. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good. Yeah. By the way, as time goes on, these will become a lot easier. Yes. Right. They a lot. So just. Be gentle the first couple nights. Right. Yeah. Really, you, yeah. That's where. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Give me a situation. Yeah. Right. Right now. Timothy's, you push a little. Cannot harder. leave. Right. right. He's right. <laughs> What's the way to say? I said you can push your Timothy's a little bit harder. Yeah. Once right. they get a little bit of it down, right. I basically say make it specific. Right. Make it challenging, and make it measurable. Mm-hmm. And so often, if someone says something, I said, "Is that like, hey, I'm going to do this three times this week?" Say, "Is that challenging for you?" I yeah. Put All right. Perfect. Mind. Not really. All right, well, what do you want to do to adjust it? But those are the three things I ask them at the beginning. Hey, remember we're doing our I will statements. Specific, challenging, measurable. But you may not do that at the beginning with lost people or right. seekers or even your Timothys the first few times just so they feel comfortable. But as time goes on, that is something I remind them every week. Because mm-hmm. like the first thing I wanted to say uh, to Tim over there uh, was, well, tell me when you're going to go back and make it right with your wife. Right. Before we go okay. on the plane. Right. So yeah. I was like, are you going to do it now? Are you going to do it later? Is it going to be a date later this week? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it was just like, yeah. no, I know. He, in his yeah. mind, he's got a time, yeah. and that's okay. So, uh, but as time goes on, you can just ask, you know, more clarifying. Don't let the sun go down, man. Go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, what, were, what were those three words again? I'm sorry. Specific. Specific. Challenging and measurable. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, but I guess mine's kind of two. Um, I will declare Joshua 1 9 over my life each morning. Okay. And then I will uh, be strong and courageous by sharing my story three times this week. That's awesome. Very mm-hmm. specific. Yep. Drop the mic. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I will meditate on God's word. Um, but three times this week, I will find a piece of scripture, not reading a lot, but find one scripture and actually break it, like just meditate on it mm. to God's Okay, awesome. Um, I will remind myself to be strong and courageous when I feel leadership anxiety. Okay. Mm-hmm. So any, any, any examples of, of that in the past, feeling leadership anxiety? Well, I guess just when I, it's all mental. Mm-hmm. So it's things that I'm like, okay, take the thought captive and remind myself of First Joshua one mm-hmm. nine. Um, so I guess I wrote that down after the measurable part. It's a little bit harder to track, mm-hmm. but I can rethink it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can come up with a better one. I'll help keep you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> you will help me. Well, I like I, I like what he said. He said he will like remind himself and declare it over his life in the morning. So. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I can copy and paste that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fine. And and, 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 uh, that's and you good. might have that, especially with non-believers, where they hear somebody yeah. says, "Oh, yeah, that's that's me." You know, they, which, they which by the way, is why Rondi said, "Wait till afterwards and write them down." Right. Right. Yep. You mm-hmm. can now tweak. You and I heard that. I said this, but I might tweak it, and then that sounds like a better yeah clarification. That's good. That's good. Yes, sir. Um, my will is to be intentional about meditating on scripture. Okay. So, what would you say the best time that you would, best time for you to meditate on scripture? Early in the morning. In the morning. Okay. In the morning. okay. How many days? I'm a new believer, so. Too much pressure. I'm going to try, try to do it every day because I want to be able to just uh, think about it throughout the whole day. Yes. But, is, but isn't that key what he said, I'm going to try? 
Yes. Is that an I try statement or an I will statement? Right. Ooh. So it has to be. Well, it started with an I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Next week you will be I will. Yeah. 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 You're looking back will be I tried. And you're looking forward is I will, right? <laughs> hey, be strong and courageous, man. Stand your ground. Don't let them move on. Don't fear, man. Don't fear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I will share the gospel, my story. His story with Jordan Bob this week. Mm. Amen. Awesome. I can't do it in the next hour, 24 hours. Right. You know what I'm but it will happen this week. Okay. And okay. he's a challenge because okay. he's a kid that wants to date my daughter. Mm. And he doesn't know Christ. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. You won't forget that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe yours should be, I will not kill him. <laughs> <laughs> he says that one every day. Okay, we got one more. I, there's a, a quick explanation. There's a, a group house at the end of my street. And I don't even know what the group is at this point in time. For a while, it was alcoholic women that were there. Um, and, but now there's a bunch of men. They all, I can tell they're all from different walks of life. They're living in a house. I have been praying about seeing what I can do now if I can get it. So this week I will make contact with that house and see if there's Bible study I can start, uh, an evangelism or a growth, whatever I can do uh, in that group because there they are. So I, God's been telling me I need to do something there. So I will. Awesome. And remember, your I will is not tw that's not the 24 hours. Right. 24 hours is sharing it. With the person in show, yeah. that's the, the I will. You got the whole week to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but twenty four hours that's sharing it, what you got to take from that person. Yeah. And by the way, at this point, I'd write them down if you haven't written them down. Right. So yeah. take the time. You all should be writing them down because yeah, you yeah. better believe uh, we're going to talk on a Zoom next week and we're going to ask you this question, mm -hmm. especially over there. And again, we're not saying do it now, but like uh, he, like he was just saying, like you, you could actually be saying, okay, um, why don't you reach out to so. What's Scott? What was his name again? Jordan. Uh, Jordan. You could say, hey, when are you going to try to connect with Jordan? I, I don't know yet. Um, wh why don't you go ahead and stop and text him right now and see? You know, what are you going to do? Have a meal, a cup right, of coffee? Right. I'm going to have a cup of coffee with him. Why don't you text him? Or, you know, if you need to. Like, that's got like, specific right. things you could do if you need to do it. I'm more than happy with what he said, but you could get more specific. Like, hey, what day are you going to try to walk over this week? Hey, I'm off on Friday. I'm On Friday, I'm going to make that effort. Or I'm going to reach out. And, so you can help him again. Just guide it. But... It's okay right now. Uh, this is also, if you want it, now again, this is going to be dependent on time. Um, if you, it's, say you're long past time, you're done, right? You, but you still might want to say, hey, who's that one person you think you should share with? And have somebody state a name and write down that and I'll share. Because then you're, I will, I will share with Julie this week, I will share with Jordan. So whatever that is that you sense you should share something, you can do that too, whatever. Uh, again, just based on like that framework of time and what you want to make sure you do. So, uh, Guys, we need to do a few things together real quick. How about anything to finish out what you're saying? Right yeah, now? yeah. So, 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 so at the end, because we're trying to, yeah. trying to reproduce, trying to reach, right? So at the very end is, you know, listen. It will be amazing if you can bring somebody with you next week. Oh, that's gonna be. Fun. It'll be amazing if you can bring somebody with you next week. Listen, I'm telling you once again, just one person. I you, you gotta bring your whole family. You can bring them. You don't have to. But uh, and, 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 and and you want to start your your very first DBS. You want to say, I mean, every time, bring somebody with you next week. Bring somebody with you next week. Now, and I do have a question. We're going to go to questions now, so it's good. Well, I mean, what's the size? I mean, is there a typical size group you want to try to keep, or you don't care how big it gets? Because if every, let's say you have 10 people and everybody brings one person, now you got a group of 20. Praise the Lord. Oh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. I know. Exactly. But what I'm saying is then that so, your, your hour and a half yes, meeting or hour and 45 so, minutes so, just so, doubled. Well, so, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. Well, so, so let's get practical. It's a very practical thing Chris just made. You asked the question, Chris made a comment. If I actually went through the whole night, I don't want to speak five minutes over the whole time. I got 10 people, five minutes is 50 minutes, right? By the way, how long did it just take to do what y'all just did? An hour, an hour and a half. No, <laughs> hour and 45 minutes. Correct. From all the way from the teaching time hour. Right. Y'all actually began the DBS at 1025. 
So it was an hour and 20 minutes for what you just did to actually go through it. Now, you probably had 15, almost 20 minutes of questions. So it would have been a solid hour no matter what. Y'all with me on that? And but we didn't he, do the look back. Well, that's, that's correct. What so that's what I'm saying. Right. You didn't do a look back. And look he up. kind of, y'all finished off quickly on the look forward, right? We really didn't spend time. We didn't stop and pray for each other and moving forward for the week. So it's, that's what I'm telling you. See, it's, it's pretty easy. And yet, uh, let's ask a couple questions because um, it'll kind of answer stuff as we go along and we'll come back to group size. I'll come back to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. What did you notice Rondi do that you would just celebrate as you watched him lead this time? What, what did you appreciate about what he did? What did you like? Uh, his humble, soft-spoken. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, I appreciate that. Yeah. It, it didn't seem like he was, again, because he was a facilitator, he wasn't like, he wasn't the point person talking down to the people below him. He was just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. That was very welcoming. You know, he repeated back what the person said, which mm -hmm. affirmed and kind of honored what they said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to let him know you you are an active listener. So. Yeah. yeah, affirming, not condemning. So nothing we said, you said. Whoa, you know, you were yeah. just like, <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, and then you came back with something else. Or, yeah, but you asked for elaboration on yeah. some that you did yeah. for me, and it's like elaborate a little bit more on that. So that's challenging, you know, to do yeah. that. He invited participation um, from the reading to answering questions. Um, hey, let's start here. I'd really like to hear from all of you guys. I think mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Good. What else? I've never seen him patient. He gave long spaces, effort. It seemed like everybody was done talking. There was a long space there just in case somebody decided that there was yeah. no no impatience to try it because my yeah. instinct's going to be like, all right, that's the third person. Let's, let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> here it is, by the way. When you're wanting to fill the gap, remember, who are we interrupting? The Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Allow the quietness to be the Holy Spirit speaking. Listen, I'm preaching a message. I, we, we read scripture, did something during a message, and during it, I watched the guy sit there and he kept reading, and he turned the page, and kept reading, he turned the page. And somebody made a comment, because it irritated me, he was just reading the whole service. I'm going, he was reading the scripture. <laughs> like, if he thinks, this is speaking to me, well, praise God. Like, who am I to argue? So you want to give them the space to, like, if they're, like, focused, if they're there, if they're stuck, in, praise God, keep, let them. I mean, we're trying to let the Holy Spirit speak. He said, at least three or four times, uh, the Holy Spirit's the best teacher in the place, right? Uh, he said, I'm the facilitator, the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. the teacher, mm -hmm. and um, just leave it that. So give them the space, let them hear from him. Let them read scripture. Remember, a lot of these people, this is the first time they've ever seen these words of scripture. Mm -hmm. So Malcolm's group, Genesis 1-1, very first night, all lost people, the guy looked up at Malcolm, and after reading, you know, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. The guy's number one com first comment made for the night, the guy went, if there's a God that powerful, that when he speaks, he changes everything, I want to know that God. Amen. And Malcolm said, I began to cry. I said, why, Malcolm? He goes, I forgot that truth. I just read over the passage. I was trying to get to the seven days. I was trying to go through. What did he like? And he goes, I, I just... I forgot that God spoke. And so they're going to say things that's going to be like, wow. Yeah. Um, what else? Anything else that, that you just noticed in this leadership? Um, he asked a question, but then always went last. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Except for the very vulnerable places. Mm -hmm. So he said, he did that, except I noticed this too, because it was different. You said, except for when the I will statements. So let, let me go first. Mm -hmm. I yeah. will. Right. And, and then also with, who are you going to share it with? I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. I'm going to share this with my daughter. Yes. Or no, that one you might have been at the end. But the I will yeah. statement. So, like that's the one that's going to make right. everybody yeah. unre uneasy. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 And he went great. first on that. Right. Yeah. I noticed that too. Mm -hmm. Let me ask a question too. Two things I noticed, and I'm going to just ask a question, but I just want to make sure I say it. I love that he, Ronnie started saying, I not only lead, lead a VBS, but I participate in a VBS. Yes. I Loved it, by the way. I just thought, ah, it's just so good to hear it. By the way, why did he participate in the VBS? Did you hear why he said I participate in it? Oh, own my own spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Loved and, it. And uh, uh, 
uh, the way it happened is that you know once we finished the DM, first DMD and we, I got a rotation which I'll talk about how we rotate my, my Timothy's um, I, I stopped participating and so I would go in my office while they was doing it and um, it was a you know we have a men's DBS on right. Wednesdays and so my facilitator he was going out of town he asked me you know, to cover for him and so I told Caleb I'm I want you to cover because I wasn't even going to that so I went and played nine holes of golf and I just heard the Holy Spirit go to DBS so I left golf course with there and um, man realized what I was missing mm -hmm. and so from that point on I made to the DBS under one of your Timothy yes yeah mm -hmm. he's not leaving it yeah he's in there no, yeah. I'm not leaving it yet. so by the way if someone else is leading it what is that allowing you to do encourage them evaluate them now you're seeing that is what I'm doing actually working Mm -hmm. You could join. By the way, you don't have to join it forever. But you know, you, your goal is your goal is not to leave the DBS. Your goal is to get as quickly as possible someone else to lead the DBS that you're watching and be successful in. Mm -hmm. Right. The way to stop this whole movement is for you thinking you need to lead the DBS. Your goal is I need all of my guys to do DBS. Talk about Eric Walton. Eric Walton. So, so we have got a guy in New York right now. In June, he's got. Five DBSs, I'm five, right? I'm pretty sure five oh, DBSs, yeah. 40 to 60 people in them, depending on any given week, with some pipe. I mean, he does one for the New York State Legislative and he has 15 to 20 leaders show up, which is a whole nother one. So, But here's what he said, I can't do any more. I'm just exhausted, I'm so frustrated. I just paused and said, wait a second. I said, you've been doing some of these groups for months. When are you gonna ask somebody else to leave one of the groups? And he said, well, what do you mean? I'm like, man, did you kill me, right? Like, okay. So he just said, I said, here's your assignment from me, just as a, as a coach mentor to you. Pick one person in every one of your DBSs and make sure they do part of your group for the next few weeks so that by the end of this month, they can lead an entire DBS, okay? And I said, because by August, you should be in a position that you could start a new DBS because you have five leaders who are leading your current DBSs. Now you can still show up, you can still be a part of mentoring and modeling them. But he said, I become the bottleneck immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was one of his, now that was what he was trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. right? yep. he, I don't want to be the bottleneck, right? I want, I want to empower <coughs> and release. But you know, it just took, oh yeah. And so now, by the way, he's naturally a gatherer. So I said, hey, gather the crowd, say you're going to be the leader, help facilitate the start of the DBS and turn it over as quick as possible. And make sure you know this, next week, you, you could lead this week, but next week he could say, hey, I need you to lead the look back next week and then I'll take care of the rest. Then the next week you do this. And Matt and I sat in a group mm -hmm. in Coleman, Alabama, yep. where I'm telling you, by the way, was 20, he was about a 25-year-old kid with a yep. hat on backwards, just like you, just so you Ooh, know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he slightly, he was a, but he was, I am not joking, I'm not being mean, he was as redneck as redneck kid. And he, he did this, I am not joking. Um, what did you like about this passage? <laughs> and they started. The it was worse than that. I, I, okay, I'm not, being, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. And that's and, where that guy was like, I went and I took him down and I told him I hug your neck. That guy. That was, he, that was yeah, the DBS. Way, it was that. But listen, the, Raw. everyone began to open up. And what we found out was this guy over here had been the leader. And he said, this is your night. And he was there to back him up on everything. But when he did it, the whole rest of the crowd knew. They had known the pattern and stuff. It was all yeah. good. Yeah. But he was, he was, and then by the way, they came to the look for it. He turned to someone else. And that guy looked at him and said, you know, after watching him do it, I'm really concerned that I'm not going to do the look forward well, and I'd rather watch you do it again. He said, okay, I'll do the look forward right now, and then you can do it next week. And then he yep. let the look forward. Yep. He leaned over and he let it. Mm -hmm. And so, and then he said, and then I know they talked later because next week he said, now let me show you how to do it. So he was mentoring people from yep. day one. How, how quickly can we get yep. this off to other people yep. to lead? Kevin, remember, wasn't it Rich um, who Collins, yeah. Collins who went through the entire book, and you asked him, "Hey, how many of you could could disciple yeah. a group of could new believers? Just lead a group like could this lead a group. Could lead a group like this." And and like one 
yeah. said yeah. So he then actually, you did a DBS. Yeah, that's right. So when he actually taught through this entire thing, he just taught it as content. Mm -hmm. And then I asked the question, who of you here could do what he's done for the last 10 weeks? And out of the whole crowd, it was one person and they were a high school teacher. And I said, let me show you how to do the DBS. Let's rethink the process. We did the entire DBS just like Ronnie just did. And I asked the question, how many of you could do what we just did right now? And 10 out of the 11 said, I can do that. And then they looked at him and said, oh, why can't you do it? And you know what their comment was? I don't know scripture well enough. And they're like, man, that's not an excuse. You, you don't need to know all of scripture. You just need to be able to facilitate. God's the one that teaches, the Holy Spirit teaches. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I, I guess I could, but I'm scared. I guess we should have gone to Joshua. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So but by the time that they all said we could do that, right. Right. right? That's what we're trying to do. That's the reproducibility, which, by the way, I'm going to ask a question. He made a couple comments, but we got to the, 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 he asked at the end, who should share? What's the benefit? If you ask that question, who can you share this with? What's the benefits of asking a question from a system perspective? Why are you asking who should you share this with? Mission. Huh? It just reinforces mission. It's all about the mission. What's our goal? What are we going to be teaching them later too? Multiply. We want to teach them to multiply. We want to teach them to share your story. We want to teach you to share God's story. This is just, by adding this component, what you're doing is you're setting up the whole rest of the system that we're discipling on. We're setting up reproduction from day one. Yeah, and plus if you're not obedient, nobody else will be. So, yeah. Yep. By the way, you guys, if you didn't catch anything else he said, your growth comes through obedience. Mm -hmm. Not the content. Mm -hmm. It's the obedience. Mm -hmm. Which answers a lot of the questions we need. For all the people that are going to complain, well, this isn't content or not. The question is, are you doing what you want? Very few of our people need to learn new content. They need to put into practice what they already know. Mm -hmm. So it was great. Um, I also loved, if they've come, it's because God's Holy Spirit's already working on them. Mm -hmm. Let's just assume that. That's a great assumption. The reason they're here is because somehow God's already speaking to them. The reason they're on your heart is because God's already speaking to them. I, lo I love that you said that like that. And um, lastly... How do y'all think he did at the beginning, given instructions and framework for the group for the evening? Very clear. Yeah. Great. And so make sure you heard them. I'm very clear those first couple weeks. And then as long as they're following the rules, I don't have to say anything. Right. Somebody new joins, I do a short version mm -hmm. until the rules are broken. If the rule's broken, I'm going to stop and reiterate the rules. That makes sense? And he's really good. Well. He's the he's the prophetic one. Uh, he's like he's like really hard about that. Um, yeah. yeah, but I appreciate that he was very specific about the timeline, especially quoting other scripture. Hey, one more thing: Why was he so specific? Because we saw this a few times about why you don't want them quoting the Psalms, quoting New Testament, jumping to other passages. What in the Bible says? Why is he? Why again? Why is he saying that? Because it's no one. Unless you have that knowledge, no one else can replicate. Nobody else can do it. It kills reproduction. Just reminding you one more time. Well, and, so and I like what you said too. Is like, well, scripture is powerful. Yeah. Right. Yep. It, it doesn't. It doesn't need. Yes. It doesn't need yeah. like yeah. the Michael Jordan doesn't need this Scotty yeah. Pippen. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, is Michael yeah. Jordan? But like yeah. this passage of scripture can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to have a team yeah. for it to be powerful. Yeah. And that was really just eye So it was a good picture for him. Yeah. yeah. Now, did y'all know? Oh, go ahead, now, go ahead. You. Uh, did you notice at, at the beginning of it, uh, he wasn't saying anything. Y'all notice that? Yeah. You know, we going, it, it was a long time before he said something. Scott's been quiet. And, and so the reason, why, the reason why I bring it up because you might have somebody come in and they don't say nothing. I noticed you noticed me not saying nothing. <laughs> 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 but, but he was subtle about it. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but that's that's actually fine. We we had this lady, uh, heard her husband started coming. No, no. He, he goes to the men's. He goes to the men's. And so she started coming to the one we have on, on Wednesday nights. And uh, she came in, and, I mean, and she was just, just quiet as a mouse, quiet as a mouse. She started talking, I think, the, either the third or the fourth. Okay. She was just like, I'm just not comfortable. But, but she kept coming. She kept coming. So now she's in our... Uh, I was second uh, DMD class. Um, um, 
be in training, yes. So she's moved to a training center from the training center. So training center. Yeah. Even yeah. with the I will statement at the end, she didn't? Now, or or uh, did you kind of uh, maybe? Uh, yeah, she done the I will statement. She okay. done the I will statements, but she did not She did not participate. She didn't answer any of the questions, you know. Mm -hmm. And so even though I noticed them, I never, I did call them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I did have a question too. Like, so when you're going, um, because what we would always do, so when we said, all right, you had two people read, and then you're like, all right, will somebody volunteer to put it, like, to kind of tell what they remember? We tell the story. Do you tell them to close their Bibles? No, I don't. No, no, because, I mean, I mean. They, they won't look, though. Yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah. they look up. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, um, uh, I've had some, I mean, they, you know, they will actually look back at the Bible. I, I let them. Do you yeah. always ask for a volunteer? Or, I mean, I'm sure probably as it goes on, once you get more comfortable, you can start, like, calling on people. Yeah. Because yeah. that was always the tension with um, our community crews, because we do this, is like, you know, everybody in the room was dreading, don't pick on me to retell the story. <laughs> right. You know, it's a natural, it's that fear, right? Yeah. Uh, when it's just, tell what you remember, and we'll all chime in. Right, right. But yeah, I, I know if you I'm always asked. volunteer. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, who wants to retell, who wants to retell the story? By the way, you can do it before the story. Hey, tonight you're retelling the story afterwards, right. so listen well. You read, you read, and then, <laughs> by the way, he's already He's prepared, because then he's not as nervous. Through. I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, and again, it's all memory and rep repetition is the motive to success. So, so you say that it's just read the story twice? twice. Because I've heard twice. Some say yeah. three times. Twice, yeah. twice is it. Two's good. Some, yeah. of, some of these are like long chapters. Yeah. You do them all. Let the scripture speak. Let the whole, just read the whole. Just go ahead, yep. Two chapters. Well, no, so on the back, you want, you want to speak yeah, yeah, to it? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, now, we broke some of these up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We broke yeah. some of them up. Because once again, it's not about content. Right. So it's not it's not that we got to finish. Uh, let's see. 25 verses. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and, 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 yeah. and once again, uh, we broke that up. We, we done 13, 1, 1 to 13. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. yeah we yeah, break yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. So this is written as a 28 kind of thing. I would think some of these, when you, you'll see sometimes there'll be 35 to 50 chapters. The reason they're like versus, this, versus. versus, versus, sorry, or, no, 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 sorry, <laughs> let me restate this. This is written as like 28 weeks of study guides. Right. Yeah. But I would say if you go online, you'll see the same content 35 to 50 weeks. Mm. But topic-wise, Genesis 1 is about God's creation. <clears throat> So if you split it into two weeks, you're still just looking at God's creation. You're doing it right. over two weeks. But concept-wise, it's creation, it's sin, it's fallenness, it's brokenness, it's redemption in the, in the plan. Right. right. So this is the overarching plan moving from God creating to the cross. Right. That's the goal of this. You can break it down to as many weeks as you want. Uh, if you're overseas, and this I'm not, we're not even going to talk about this now. If you're overseas... The very first thing on the first night, people are like, well, is there an answer to the issue? Well, the answer is Jesus. By the way, overseas, they don't give you the answer. They'll say, keep reading scripture. And they'll wait six months to get to the cross. And what's interesting, I'm just telling you in Asia and China, because they're a community over there, like they, they do things in groups, they'll normally come to it and they'll finally say, Jesus is the answer. And they'll go, oh my gosh, Jesus is the answer. And the whole group accepts Jesus the same night. They'll be like, we've been waiting for the answer to the issues. Okay, Casey? So this is something that's really helped me with DBS. DBS is an evangelism tool overseas, yep. mm -hmm. and we're kind of modifying it to be a way that people read scripture. But you'll have lost people in your group, and they might find Christ yep. by being that group. Yeah, it's yep. quite normal. How long is DBS typically? So, well, you just experienced one. No, I mean weeks wise. Oh well, you know, so you you determine it. So some people want it's, to get one on the... definitely, uh, and it goes to answer question two. Yeah. So what happens when I get to twenty? What happens when I get to twenty five and we can no longer share? I would say split to two do two, two, two groups. Yeah. And then so, but you're working through the back of that, which is you can use any passage of scripture yep. doing anything. What Casey just said overseas, a lot of it is for people who are unbelievers searching. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to help them begin to understand a yeah. framework of scripture. Yeah, the whole creation of yeah. Christ. Um, yeah. yeah, and by the way, let me give you one example. So I had a, a girl that her, her boyfriend was a student of mine years before. She comes to our church, and we sit down, and I go to present the gospel. She's living with the friend. She's got a baby by another daddy. 
She lived with mom not working, been with lots of guys in between. I start presenting the gospel and I say there's this brokenness called sin and stuff like that. She had never even heard the name Jesus. She didn't know who Jesus was when I talked to her. She'd only been in a Catholic church once, and she finally realized Jesus was the funny figure on the wall, <laughs> on the cross. She didn't know what that meant. So as we're talking, though, with this girl, I said, well, the problem is sin. And she goes, well, but God loves us all, so how can he be disappointed with me or mad at me about sin? So what I realized is there's no way this girl's going to understand the concepts in this city. Like, I, you need to pray to receive Jesus now. She goes, but I don't have a problem. God doesn't have a problem with me. And I'm thinking, how much of scripture do I have to show her before she realizes you're broken? Now, she knew she was broken. She just believed that God loved her like that, like right that there wasn't a yeah. problem. So this is where they don't understand the concepts. When people start talking about a post-Christian world, we've gone from a Bible mindset where people yeah. understand some concepts to a point where people don't understand the basic concepts that you yeah. and I might believe. So we have to let scripture speak over and over again. So it's just a framework. So I guess because the goal is multiplication and the ideal is like from Genesis, right? Like kind of unpacking that. Yeah. When you get to the end, the goal is to, okay, now let's split and do they start over with like their own or? Well, I think there's lots of things that can happen. Once once they've gotten through it, I would just start going into other parts of scripture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Number two, if you led people to Christ, you want to begin discipling them and you're going to start realizing who should go into D&D &D and start going on to other right. stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and at the same time, members. you wouldn't necessarily even need to split. The goal would be, let's say we have a group this size and Chris keeps bringing people. I'm going to pull Chris and Junior aside and say, hey, listen, guys, when you lead someone to Christ again, don't bring them here. You start discipling them the way I was discipling you. And hey, and then I'll start going through the DMD with them specifically to train them to do that so that the group doesn't necessarily get so much bigger because they're already going. Then they stay a part of this home, this group, this home church because they're new believers so that this is their home. And then now they're outreach, they're reaching out and discipling new people. Right. It would be better for Chris to disciple someone and then to start a second DBS and help us help them be successful. Rather than this thing just grow too I big. Guess, but anytime you're starting a DBS, you're starting with that Genesis, correct? Probably. Okay. Yeah, you can do any. You don't any, have to. Any scripture. The, this uh, is just one way, yeah. one framework to help yeah. people understand. But well, you could just start with the book of Matthew. So, so where does the DMD come in? Are you, like, are you looking? If somebody to wants to lead a DBS, do you need to go through the DMD? So. Don't have to. Here, here's okay. here's what it says. Um, I saw okay. answer the question. Let me, let me back it up just a little bit. You're yeah. taking your Timothys through your your D and D, mm -hmm. right? You get to this chapter. They begin a DBS Bible study. So you're still working with them through D and D. Correct. But you have them doing a DBS. Correct. But you also want them to become a Paul, who eventually has their own Timothys. I guess that's where it starts well, to get. It doesn't. Well, we'll go through I, I want them. Again. I want them to be a good Timothy that has a Titus. Yes. So is it? I want right. them to gather a group right. like this. Okay. They're they're leading those people to Christ. They begin to disciple those people. Out of those people, they pick the best that should be developed, and they help reproduce the process in that development. Okay. Right. Okay. But and the others, they just keep doing a DBS. You just keep keep plugging along with the yeah. DBS because they're in Scripture reading and growing. And so yes, what happens is remember we said this yesterday. I can plant a church and never have a disciple, but if I'm making disciples, what will naturally occur? A church, a church will occur. So you keep making disciples out of them, that group, it will become community whether you want it to be or not. It'll become that. So then we'll ask later as we move forward, well, now what do I do? Because I have 25 people showing up, and now I've got three other groups that we've started out of it, and we're helping each other. What do we do with all of this? That's a great second question, and we'll get there. Hey, so you were going to add something a minute, guys. Yeah, on the bottom of that card, dbsguide.org, oh, that has additional studies that you can use. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah. If yeah. you go through creation. Yeah. And there's the app also. There's, yeah. there's an app for it. Which, yeah. is, which is pretty good. It's great resources. Yeah. Yeah. Just stick to this. Because they might, by the way, one of the hardest things, that they might have one question, question different. Or, like like you all said, you went to four questions. It's not bad you went to four questions, but but... You miss out on some of those other questions well, right we now, just but yeah, yeah, we just yeah, have to yeah. because yeah, we just shorted talking. because by the time you did, what does this say about man? What does this say about God? And if you let it go, like right. we did, we sort of let you let it go. Why? 
then your time just gets eaten yeah. up with just those two questions. Yeah. So we limited it just to that. But that's what I was telling him. I said, but, but we missed out on a whole lot here yeah. mm -hmm. about yeah. by doing it that way. And, and, and this here, I mean, even, I mean, your church folk, would, I mean, they're going to they, they rediscover God. Mm -hmm. I mean, doing this, right. I mean, my whole, you know, my church, would, I mean, we just rediscovered, I mean, his, his, uh, his create, I mean, the creator that he is, we, I just had folk eyes just open. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, they read it, you know what I'm saying? They read it. I, I read the story, but it wasn't until they got to the DBS that there was like, "Wow, I mean, he done that." Mm -hmm. I never thought about it. You know, I mean, so that's 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 what this that's what's so amazing about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, oh, and sometimes we'll teach. Oh, your question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish it real quick. Sometimes we we teach the DBS before we get too far into the DMD, we say, hey, let's take a pause. Let me show you how to do a DBS. In fact, pause on that. By the way, the reason we just did this now is because of what Matt's about to say. Mm -hmm. You're going to have people that start sharing Christ with people, and they're going to go, I've got four people I shared with, and they want to have spiritual dialogue. What do I do? So they just bring them to church, and then you're like, oh, wait, then you lost the opportunity to disciple right. them. So, so the simple way, this now. Yeah, the simple way to disciple a person that you lead to Christ or... For some of my people, it's if I if I share my story with you, I share the gospel with you, but you don't say yes, then they can, especially if it's someone, because we're starting with our network, people we know, then all of a sudden at work, it's like a little awkward, like, hey, he said no. Unless you just say, hey, man, I had a, I loved having conversation with you today. It was great. You know, have you read, ever read much of the Bible before? No, not really. Hey, I love to have more conversations with you like this. There's a few passages. Would you be interested in reading a passage of scripture? And it's just discussing and discovering what it might actually say, if it, or if it has any implications for life. I'd love to have more conversations like that. Would you be interested? Then that way of him saying, no, I'm not going to accept Jesus, is like, it just turned into a, a more of a conversation. And so it's an easy way in, and then you got a discovery Bible say, hey, if you have any friends that, are, that would be interested in having a spiritual conversation, man, invite them. It'd be great. And if you already have a DBS, then you just invite them. Hey, I have a DBS. We meet on Thursdays. Yeah. We already have one. DBS. Invite them in. But make sure if that DBS is with Christians, don't invite lost people to it. Right. Because they're going to kill it. Start it with lost people, even if it's just one person, and invite them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it just makes it it makes DBS it way better. For, for lost, lost people, people or for new believers. I, yeah. Or, I mean, uh, or Great. the church members that want to come to one. Right. Uh, yeah, if you have one with church members, I wouldn't mix it with people that aren't church members unless they're a Timothy, but I wouldn't have like five Timothys and they have one or two. Right. Yeah. Okay. You need to have a leader who can make sure that the dialogue doesn't get sideways. In it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if they're following, like he said, the church, the pastor was the worst. Yep. Because he had an agenda, like not in the bad, mm -hmm. but he, he didn't yep. understand. Yeah. 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 But make sure you get your question. Yeah, I did. Sorry. Cool. So, um, early May. Let Kevin to Christ, this guy in their church. Um, got to baptize him in early June, and after I baptized him, we started going through DMD. So I'm meeting with him and going through that. Yep. Are you saying that I should have started by taking him to a DBS? No. And then. No. So all right, so that's what I, I'm asking. So you no, meet no, somebody no, in Christ. No, 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 no. Back up. <laughs> You, you're in a conversation with Kevin, and Kevin hasn't yet come to Christ, and you start doing DBS with him. Once Kevin comes to Christ, now he's come to Christ, DMD, go straight to the material. Got it. But you may say, wait a second, I don't have enough time to do both. Just let's stay in the DBS for a while, but now two or three people come to Christ. You go, hey guys, I'm going to pull you two or three together, and let me start taking you through some other stuff that we can help you grow in your spiritual journey. Does that make sense? I think so. Say it again. Yeah. yeah. So, listen. Okay. Two things. Open your books to the very back, real quick. Yeah. Sorry. Let's. Go ahead. Let me give you a page. My book's over. Uh, page one fifty-eight. Or let's do one fifty-nine because we've already done that. Page one fifty-nine. So, the goal is to make disciples to make disciples. Uh, the DBS is a tool of evangelism and a way to help disciple, but it doesn't take the place of the actual discipleship skills and habits you want. It just keeps them in scripture. 
You want to keep them with Scripture forever. So you can do a DBS forever with new believers and believers, right? Once he comes to Christ, though, you want to help his formation. Like, you want to guide. I've come to Christ. Now he's here. Once he's here, what kind of things do I know I want him to do? Right? So you can start going through DMD. You may not have enough time to do two groups. So what you could do, you could pull them aside, page 159, and say, hey, Jimmy or Kevin, Kevin, I know you just came to Christ. Here's what I want you to do this week. The, the Bible says over here that all of us have our own unique story of how I came to know Christ, how my life has changed since I came to know. So what was I like before? No, no. And you know what? This week, I want you to actually write down your story. Let me give you a book. It's on page uh, 27. Why don't you fill this out this week? And let's talk about it next week when we come together. And, and Or you could say, hey, I see you struggling with your identity. Identity is chapter 4. By the way, chapter 4 is page 161. There you go, 161. Hey, let me help you a little bit on your new identity in Christ. Here's some principles. Now, this is what, what you're looking at now. This is a one-page overview of the entire chapter. Of the entire chapter in the book. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This is a one page, 161, is a one page overview of pages 24 to 37, or whatever it is in the book. You could actually take the time and start discipling them through the book, or if you only have a few minutes extra after a DBS, you can just start talking about biblical principles that you know you want him to grow in and encourage him. Whatever that looks like, disciple him. Does that kind of make sense? So what you would rather have is getting a person into DMD, though. Because, and I say that because they may not have the time to be in a DBS and be you sitting down spending time with them. That's correct. So his new Kevin. So you want to get them to DMD, ultimately, is, correct. is the goal. And then once they're in DMD, we're going to reteach them how to do a DBS that they can be a part of and potentially lead in the future. Okay. What you don't want to do is get Kevin away from his family, friends, and neighbors who, once he realizes as he starts DMD, that he could be doing a DBS, he can reach right back out and start gathering those people also. We have a guy named Chris, by the way. He's the printer that he mentioned earlier. Chris runs a business and said, I'm going to do DBS at his business. He, he did this big push, invited all these people, only two showed up. He was so disappointed. And three weeks later, one of those people accepted Christ. The guy turned around and said, as he accepted Christ, Chris just began talking to him about just some of the basics of this. The guy went out and started talking to his family and friends and said, man, I keep talking to all my family and friends and tell them what a difference this makes. Can I start a DBS? The guy's a brand new believer. Chris said, yeah, let me help you do that. So he went with the guy. They started a DBS. That guy's now meeting with three or four people. So brand new believer, a lost person getting invited to a group, comes to Christ within three weeks. Three weeks later, starts a group. And by the, four, the next week out, so now we're at less than eight weeks, that guy's already got three lost people in his group. So Chris is going, i got to figure out how to disciple all these guys, to disciple him. Up to. So that becomes his next issue. But that would be a normal thing that you could see happen. So Kevin, you disciple him, but when you're discipling him, the DBS is just a tool around it. It's our attractional tool. It's the, I shared my story, I'm sharing God's story. Like Matt said, I can easily invite them into this group and be able to go through it. But... I can also do the exact same stuff with believers just looking at scripture, right? So as they come to Christ and stuff, I can keep both things together. But there's principles I want to move towards. Here's the material. I can start discipling anybody in this material at any point. I can go through it page by page, or I can go to the back and just give highlights of an overview. So just Whichever got, works yeah, I, well, I'm still having some wires crossed. This is just going to take me time of hearing yep. this over and over again. Yep. But the Discovery Bible Study, the DBS, is not discipleship. I mean, as in like what we're trying to do with the DMD. Correct. Because I'm, I'm hearing like primarily having lost people at a DBS. Yeah. But I'm thinking my world, most of those are probably going to be saved people. Yep. Right now. Right now. But let me tell you, as you as, as your saved people begin to reach their lost people, the DBS will be the initial tool for them to do that. Okay. And in many times, the DBS will be will be the sermon yeah. of the micro church that gets planted. Yep. Okay. Instead of saying, okay. "Hey, the goal is to train the Timothy to preach for fifty minutes," 
I mean, if you think about, mm -hmm. let's say oh, Romney came in and he and he preached for oh, forty five minutes on on Joshua, right? W would you have got the same out of it as we by doing the Discovery Bible study together? No, because the whole time you're thinking, what am I learning? What am I hearing? What is this God? What is God? What am I sensing? What is God asking me to do? It's an entirely different experience and <coughs> ten times more effective. And so the goal isn't for the micro church to turn into a preaching session, but to use the engine of the DBS to be that that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. When you do a DBS, um, are you reading out of the blue book the the part you took us through? No, no, no. no. Every single time? No, no, no. That's just, just for the, that's just for the Timothy to be trained. Right. Yeah. So I, we were just modeling for you okay. what to do in a training center. Once you've right. trained your guys to do that, then you just go to part two. We actually showed you how to do it. Yeah. Gotcha. So we just knew that you. We could have just gone straight to how to do it, but we went ahead and read it straight out of the book so that you knew exactly what he was doing. So and then we gave you the, the bookmark. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And where do I get the point? bookmarks? What your Timothys will where use in their DBS. Casey. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna give everybody ten, uh, and if you need more, I'll send them out to you in like two days. So. Hey, one last thing, and then we're gonna stop and eat lunch together, uh, because I want to speak to what Matt just said. So, listen, we're all teachers in the room. Pearl of great price. Y'all know that story, right? I open up the pearl of great price. I did a personal devotional, asking it as if I would preach a message. I came up with seven key concepts. I thought would come out of that passage, just quickly, right? I went into my DBS, we did the passage, read it, asked <coughs> questions, and then we began to dialogue just like we did today. They gave six of my seven points out of the group that night. Mm -hmm. I mean, just as clearly as if I preached it. Then I threw in my one insight, just like he did, right? I threw in my one insight, which happened to be the one that they didn't hit. And they were like, okay, yeah, I see that too, that was good. Wasn't the best one. But then when we were done, so I'm like, wait, we're seven for seven. Like, they hit everything that I would have done. But when we're done, Matt Amaglior is the one who leaned forward, and, and I, we're at the very end of the night. And Matt said, hey, guys, I've been a follower of Jesus for a long time. But if I'm reading this passage correctly, this guy was willing to give up everything because what he found was so great. And everyone's like, yeah, we've been saying that. And he said, well, the problem is what I found. I wouldn't give up what I have for it. Am I missing something? And I'm telling you, it was a Holy Spirit drop in the room moment. And we just began to process and pray. And that's, that's a great question. And he's just like, I feel like I'm missing it. We need to talk to Jesus about that. And what occurred to me is, my sermon would have never gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. Never. And it was a lot better coming from him than me. But I got to tell you, I didn't even notice him. I think one of the core values, of, I like. so you're going to find, you're going to hear spiritual truths that you never would have found on your own if you just trust this process better. What he did, it, it will just come out. Mag I walk away writing these sermons because of what people say. Just all the time. It's like, well, I would have missed that completely. So, Father, thanks for this time. As we get ready to eat food, can we?